The great 2021 Arizona adventure begins. We depart from Quartzsite, Arizona. We've been here for about a week, as we do almost every January. And first, we're gonna go south almost all the way to the Mexican border. We're going to explore Organ Pipe National Monument. This is almost bucket list. Then east towards Tucson. We'll go up to Mount Lemon to see the snow and to Saguaro National Park to see more cacti. Then Picacho Peak State Park, where we're going to climb all the way to the top. Then we're going to switch gears and visit the White Mountains of Arizona, namely the town of Sholo. But along the way, we're going to stop by Casa Grande Ruins National Monument, Miami, Arizona, the Salt River Canyon, and eventually, once we get to the White Mountains, we'll begin researching a possible future location for, um, let's call it Pelicamp West. Yeah, that might happen. After that, Lost Dutchman State Park, the Superstition Mountains, Goldfield Ghost Town, the Apache Trail to Tortilla Flats and beyond, and the Pièce de Résistance. We're going to party in Sedona and maybe do a hike or two. We're going to make a day trip to Williams and the Grand Canyon. Yeah, the Grand Canyon. It never gets old. And then after that, Montezuma Castle, the Montezuma Well, Tusigut National Monument. We'll taste some local wines, we'll visit the Jerome Mining Town, and then we'll go back to the White Mountains after a fresh dusting of snow. We're going to end our epic road trip by visiting two very different towns in southern Arizona. One of them, Bisbee, a copper, gold and silver mining town. The other one needs no introduction, it is Tombstone. We'll also visit Chiricahua National Monument if we're zooming back east. So sit back and buckle up, because you're in for a ride. The great 2021 Arizona road trip begins now. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah. well, on the road again. I'll be honest, I was starting to get a little bit antsy. I'm really not used to staying in one place for too long, so after five days boondocking in the desert, I'm glad to be moving again. Apparently, while it was raining in Quartzsite, it was snowing in the mountains. These huge power lines are coming from the Palo Verde nuclear plant, the largest one in the USA, and oddly enough, the only large nuclear power plant in the world that is not located near a large body of water. And here's where we turn south, towards Gila Bend. And here we are. You can tell this used to be a KOA. I mean, they still have the yellow golf carts. Well, here we are, Sonoran Desert RV Park. And uh, let me tell you, I love boondocking in the desert, but there's something to be said for full hookups. And uh, this used to be the, I think the Hila Bend KOA. Uh, I guess it's not a KOA anymore, but I'm gonna stay here one night. And it was like 50 bucks. I know it's a little pricey, but I just wanted to have one day with nice full hookups at a nice place like this. I stayed here two years ago and at some point we have to wash this truck, but oh, look at that. I hear 
heard the sound of fighter jets. Mm, there they are. There must be a base nearby. Well, indeed, there's the Gila Bend Air Force Auxiliary Airport. We're going to Mexico! Oh, almost. And here's another one of those border patrol checkpoints. You always encounter them near the border. Always, as you drive away from the border. And this one is pretty busy. The landscape is starting to look promising. Mexican influence is palpable this close to the border. There's even a whole industry dedicated to selling you insurance for Mexico. Ajo here seems to be a cool town, picturesque. I'll make sure to visit on the way back. This looks like another checkpoint, but there's no one here. I'm thinking that's gotta be the garlic-shaped mountain called Ajo. Yeah, Ajo. That's how you say garlic in Spanish. Look at this. Ajo. Yeah, it looks like a garlic, kind of. Take a look at this place, all these cacti. We must be getting close. In fact, here we are. Well, here we are. This is uh, Oregon Pipe National Monument, and uh, isn't this like one of the coolest campsites we've ever stayed at? I mean, I have this ginormous saguaro cactus here. That's a jumping choya. Be very careful. It looks very prickly, and it is. Of course, there's a giant saguaro behind it. And here's the rooftop view. It is a great campground, actually. The one thing to be aware of is no hookups. It is primitive, and I only managed to get a site in the no generator area, which can be a good thing. This place has been on my list for a very long time. For good reason, I see. And we haven't even begun to explore. Here's my giant saguaro. Alright, off we go. Ajo Mountain Scenic Drive. And there are three picnic areas, one of which has pet toilets. Alright, let's do it. As I mentioned, we are doing Ajo Mountain Drive on the eastern part of the park. It should take uh, two to three hours to do the whole loop. More if I decide to do any hikes, which I might. And there's a sign you don't see every day. Here we've got more information, which by the way, maximum vehicle length of 25 feet on this road. And that usually means something exciting up ahead. Hiking trails Old Country Road, Arch Canyon and Estes Canyon. Concentration of saguaro and organ pipe. 
Mm -hmm. Views into Mexico. All right. And uh, so we're here. We're gonna do this, and then we have uh, Arch Canyon bull, bull Pasture. And where's the other one? And I guess from here, we'll be able to see Mexico. Pretty cool. The saguaro cactus is such a fascinating plant, right? Some of them almost look like people. Let's see what this is. That's that historic county road trail, but that's kind of long. Eight miles is more than we want to do today. But yeah, that's it. It's about to get real. What a fabulously beautiful place this is. As I've said, this has been on the list for many, many years, and it certainly doesn't disappoint. And there goes the Border Patrol once again. I've seen quite a few of them. Look at that, it's a double arch. Here's the trailhead, so let's park and do at least part of the trail. All right, let's go on a little hike. We're gonna do the Arch Canyon Trail and yeah, there's a, there. There's a, a small arch, very delicate arch and that's um, what we're gonna do. I don't see uh, much information about the trail, but in the map it seemed like a mile maybe. I mean, I have some water. If it, if it starts getting colder, it might be an issue because I only brought this t-shirt. <laughs> Here we go, Arch Canyon Trail. Okay, it is easy to moderate or maintain the trail distance. Round trip, 1.2 miles, that's nothing. But I imagine that's only the maintained trail hood, which goes up to here. Then if you want to go up to the arch, mm, we might, we might not go all the way up to the arch. I'm really glad I'm being able to take advantage of this today because we've got rain coming tomorrow, at least that's the forecast. Yeah, that's a choya cactus. Of 
course, whenever you're doing one of these trails, never forget to look back because sometimes the best, the best views are back there. Although in this case, <laughs> here is looking back once again. It is actually pretty impressive. Now listen, you could almost hear a pin drop, so silent out here. We should go a little farther up, just to see. Arch Canyon Trail, let's do it. I must say, it is getting a little sketchy. It's getting steeper and steeper. It is supposed to be pretty strenuous from here on, so I'm just gonna do a little bit as, as far as I feel comfortable. It will be cool to see the arch which is right up there, I think. So it's not that far away, it's just the incline. I'm not gonna do it. You see, it is not the, the kind of trail that I want to do all by myself up here. If I slip and fall, there's no signal, and it's pretty steep, it's not like easy, it's technical. There's the arch up there, so we're kind of behind it here. It's like a bunch of tiny little arches. It would have been really cool to go all the way up there, but not today. Let's get back down. It's an amazing hike. Oh, look at that, look at that rock. So many unique rock formations. Let me tell you, I am so glad we came here and did this hike. And look at all the cacti. That is amazing. Late afternoon light definitely adds to the experience of being here in this unique part of the planet. Oh, the treacherous Choya and the arch. Well, yeah, that was a great trail. Organ pipe so far has not disappointed. Beautiful place and that uh, that arch up there. Uh, that's it. 
it's just beautiful too bad we're running out of daylight here well we still we still have like two hours left but we still have about an hour left of road to go back to so let's continue well that hike ended up being one hour <laughs> actually i think i could, I could pull forward here Let's continue the Ajo Mountain Road. There's that other trailhead coming up. It's too bad it is too late in the day to do that hike. But let's stop real quick and check it out. We can do it tomorrow, maybe. This is going to be another awesome hike. I mean, take a look at this place. They seem to glow in the afternoon light, right? And tomorrow, tomorrow we're going all the way up there. Back at the campground, we are just in time for sunset. I've got a feeling we're going to have one of those spectacular desert sunsets. It is quite an amazing phenomenon how the desert lights up at this time of the day. How the mountains seem to glow with this crimson hue.
first thing we're gonna try and do today is the Pueblo Blanco Drive, even though I believe the really cool part that goes right by the border wall is closed. By the way, these cacti here to the right that look like chandeliers, those are the actual organ pipe cacti. The species is much more prevalent south of the border, where it is called Pitaya Dulce, except for here in this area of southern Arizona, hence the name of the national monument. Here we go, Pueblo Blanco Drive. So it would seem like the south road, the one that goes, you know, hugging the Mexican border is closed at the moment. So I'm gonna take this all, all the way to Pinky Peak and then return. And then I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a couple of those uh, hiking trails near the campground. I mean, and if, the, if the weather doesn't deteriorate, we might do that trail that we didn't do yesterday. the beginning of that one-way section that I don't think we're gonna do today. Let me tell you, with these views, it is very tempting to continue on that road. Yeah, I decided not to go the rest of the way. I mean, that's the one-way road that is uh, unimproved at the moment and um, and what I really wanted to do was take the road that goes right next to the Mexican border and that particular road is, uh, is closed right now so Tell you what, how about we go down to Mexico real quick, just to the border. This is where I'm gonna turn around. Well, it is getting windy out there. So, um, yeah, let's do that trail that we couldn't do yesterday because it was late. I mean, it is now 10.25 a.m. It should take about two hours. Then maybe we can go into Ajo and uh, put some gas and see the town before it starts raining and then we'll be back here to do the live stream. We're back on Ajo Mountain Drive, same road we took yesterday, on our way to that second trailhead, the Estes Canyon and Bull Pasture Trails. And we're back. <laughs> it is about 11 a.m. So I think it's a perfect time to do this trail. It's a, a little cold when the wind, you know, there's a little bit of a breeze, but uh, so beautiful, so beautiful up there. Let me let me read the trail guide here real quick. 
just uh, maybe I'll take a picture just so we know what we're dealing with. And this is a loop trail. This is 1.6 miles, and then another an extra half mile to the viewpoint, and then 1.6 miles back. So that would be like almost four miles in total. I think we can do it. Um, two miles per hour. So it should take two, two and a half, maybe even two, two and a half hours. It should be all right. And hopefully it won't start uh, raining before we come back. It's a beautiful day right now. It's supposed to rain this afternoon. I don't know when. It is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous out here. Estes Canyon uh, is a little longer but less strenuous and then Bull Pas Pasture is shorter but the, the, you know, the elevation gain is, is more strenuous. So I think I'm gonna go up through the easier one and then come back down uh, through the harder one. Yeah, let's do that. These are some of the largest choyas I've ever seen. Well, going steady, almost to one mile in, and uh, yeah, it's not, not, not very strenuous at all so far. I should be careful hiking along this choya, let me tell you, one misstep could be painful. Beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful out here. It is getting cloudier and more strenuous as we begin gaining elevation here. Oh, These switchbacks. Whew. Here we go, here we have some signs. So this is where both trails meet. Half a mile to go. Well, since the, since the sun kind of came back out, um, I've decided to, to push a little farther. It should be an only an extra half mile. And then the rest of the way should be, you know, downhill. I'm a little tired. You can tell I haven't hiked in a while. Oh, look at that. <sighs> what a view. Well, the trail is not very well marked up here. And if it, it becomes increasingly, you know, technical, I might call it quits. But I'm gonna push it a little more. Should be all the way like up to there, right? that up and up we go
Well, this may have been worth the extra effort. I think it's just a little bit more to go. And we'll be at the at the vista point. Yeah, I imagine it goes all the way up there. This last part is definitely more strenuous and relentlessly uphill, but I think the views are going to be worth it. It is also getting cloudier, as I said, and significantly colder. We're almost there. We're almost there, I hope. And we made it. We made it to Ball Pasture. Yep, this is it. Somehow I was hoping for more. All right, let's head back down Ball Pasture here. A little bit anticlimactic. I mean, yeah, we have the, the great view this way, but the actual viewpoint was further down the one that we saw earlier that was really nice so um, now we just have nowhere to go but down and hopefully we'll make it back before it starts raining and the shade is getting noticeably cooler these views definitely worth the extra effort I don't even know where to look first Here's the view looking south onto Sonoita, Mexico. Here's another view south. If you look close, you can even see the border wall. Okay, we've made it to the junction. Let me tell you something. That felt like a lot more than, than half a mile. Now we still have a mile to go, but this is unexplored territory, so let's do it. I have a little bit of an uphill here before it goes all the way down. It is getting cloudier and windier and colder and it is beautiful. Is that the parking lot down there? Just the road and the wash. We're getting close. If it wasn't for the for the weather change, this would have been an awesome hike, let me tell you. Um, but you know, it's, I'm still getting a little worried that I'm gonna get caught in the rain out here, and and it's it's gotten significantly significantly colder, you know, especially when you get that breeze. It's exhilarating, but I'd rather not have to worry about getting caught in the rain out here. Yeah, let's hike back to the parking lot as quickly as possible. So dark. 
It looks like it's going to rain in a minute. What is this? I guess we were supposed to to register. But I guess this blew out in the wind. These are some of the people who have registered. I did, I did not see that registration box the last time I came. It's like not last time I came, but like three hours, like two hours ago. It felt longer just because of the of the menacing clouds at the end here. So I've been like. At the same time, accelerating, you know. I remember crossing this wash. What happens to washes when it rains? They become creeks. And we've made it. Should I tell them not to do it? Oh, maybe they're just have. Actually, it looks like they're camping out of that uh, truck, which is pretty cool. All right, let's go back. The weather is deteriorating quite a bit, so we're going to save the trip to Ajo for tomorrow. On our way to Tucson, it shouldn't be much of a detour. And now, the sun wants to come out. It is an amazing ride, let me tell you, driving through this cactus forest. This earth, so diverse. Today we're here, tomorrow we may be in an alpine forest. Who knows? Look at all these organ pipes intermingled with the saguaro. The choya almost look like flowers on the side of the road. And we're back. Let me go this way because we have to hitch up tomorrow morning. But someone told me that rats like to come into the engine bay because of the heat and they chew on your cables. Well, let me tell you, it looks like someone has been here. I don't see any damage, but definitely someone was here. It looks like we've got rain coming from Mexico. Getting a hint of a sunset out there. Believe it or not. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful morning here at the Twin Peaks Campground in Oregon Pipe National Monument. That's my gigantic saguaro ca cactus. And check out time is not until 11 a.m. So there are a couple of hiking trails here around the campground. So we're going to try to do those before before heading up to Tucson. I think Tucson is going to be the next destination. By the way, I'm trying a new setting here on the GoPro. Hopefully it looks better because I have been less than less than happy with the results so far, as you could probably tell. So there is a 1.3 mile trail to the uh, visitor center. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, 
here we are. It should be around here. There's a perimeter trail that goes all around the campground. By the way, look at that. Beautiful. Um, and there should be a trailhead somewhere here for that trail that I, that I want to take. Here seems to be a path to that perimeter trail, so that's, that's what I'm taking. Yeah, being careful with this uh, shoya cacti. You know, those are very prickly. This is the Palo Verde Trail to the visitor center. No bikes, but you can come with your pet. By the way, I just got a call back from the RV park in Tucson, the same one we stayed at three years ago. And, um, uh, you know, a couple of nights with full hookups. And then we might do some boondogging. Tell you what, I'm gonna turn around. Had we not done uh, yesterday's trails, this would have been amazing. But we did yesterday's trails, uh, the day before yesterday. And, uh, well, yeah, on the road again. Twin Peaks campground here and the uh, organ pipe in general. Very nice, very nice. I am, look at that bird. In a quarter mile, turn right. I had heard this place was nice, but uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. This, this is, I mean, the campground is totally um, primitive, no hookups whatsoever, so, you know, come prepared. And um, it's beautiful. And you know, I, will lo I love all these saguaro cacti ever since. Oh, we have garbage here. Hold on. Let me throw away my trash. I'll be right back. looking for the trash ever since I got to this campground and I guess every loop has their own uh, trash receptacles here so that's good to know oh, hold on in a quarter mile turn right one more thing there are so many things you know that, that you have to do whenever you're leaving camp this is my tire pressure monitor. It's always good to have on, just in case. Uh, as I was saying, we're going to into Ajo because I saw a car wash there and at least the truck I need, I want to wash. And then we're going to into Tucson. I have some Amazon packages to pick up. And then, I don't know what we're gonna do. By the way, another pleasant surprise. Very good Verizon signal here. Turn right. And if you have AT&T and you have an international plan, there's a signal from Mexico that you can uh, get into. It just you, you probably won't get any data that you can call. And, uh, and with the data plan that I have, it's just ten dollars a day, uh, just to be able to to use the, the Mexican signal, which continue not, for one and a half miles. It's not bad considering. So we are just. Eight miles from Mexico. Yeah, even less. I don't know. Okay, let's put gas here. In why? I wonder why they call it why. Here's a pretty quirky gas station, the Why Not Travel Store. A 
And here we are once again in Ajo. Ever since we drove through town a couple of days ago, I thought there was something cool and unique about it. Now, let's see if we can find parking with the trailer in tow, so we can explore by foot a little bit. Here's the historic Ajo Plaza, very cute, but all the parking is diagonal and there are some low clearance underpasses, so I better get out of here and look for parking someplace else. Here, this will do. That's a pretty cool mural, and this one too. Let's walk towards the plaza. It does seem pretty deserted here on a, on a Saturday. It's around noon. Let's check it out. There's the visitor center over there. Apparently, that used to be the railroad station. And here's some information about this master planned community. A mining town made to look pretty in order to attract workers. And it almost looks colonial in certain ways. Spanish revival, I think, is the correct term. There's a small market in the plaza, some vendors selling local crafts, and overall, very pleasant. The tasteful Spanish Revival architecture is complemented by the beautiful natural setting. This is the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church. A well, very cool plaza here in the, in the middle of, uh, of Ajo, Ajo, Arizona. And, um, and yeah, I just met one of uh, one of our viewers over there, and uh, you know he's going to Florida too. So <laughs> there you go. And uh, I wish I hadn't had breakfast because there's a bunch of places here that look like very cool, like to to have breakfast at. And that church, that's pretty cool. The church has a carillon. All right. We gotta continue. Let me see if I can find that car wash and then it's pretty much non-stop to Tucson, Arizona. Not a bad looking town, let me tell you. We shall return one of these days with more time. There we are. Okay, not perfect, still a little streaky at parts, but, and I did miss a couple of spots, mainly back here. <laughs> uh, I, could, I could take care of that with, uh, I could take care of that later, but it looks a lot better than it did. So, now on to Tucson we go.
There's Cat Peak Observatory, one of the places I wanted to visit on this trip and perhaps the first one to fall off the original plan. But I'll be back one of these days, I promise. Y'all know I'm into astronomy and this place I want to see. Largest solar telescope in the world? Yeah. And here's our border patrol checkpoint. They usually just tell you to have a nice day. Well, we're finally going to Tucson, a city I've driven through so many times but never visited. Well, good morning! Yeah, it was a good night last night, I slept well. And um, the idea today is to explore a little bit of Tucson, but not in any kind of rush like we usually do. We're just gonna... Let's go to the high ground first. Yes, the idea this Sunday morning is to go up to Mount Lemon, see the snow. But Google Maps keeps rerouting me, so I don't know what's going on. He's taking me for a ride because we've driven all around Tucson, but eventually, eventually we'll make it to the mountain. <laughs> oh no, the road is closed. What's going on here? Oh, look at that line of cars trying to go up to the mountain. Well. It does not look like Mount Lemon is gonna happen today. So let's go back, regroup, and think of something else to do in Tucson today. Like Sentinel Peak, for example. Hmm, nice house. We made it to the top. I think there's a little hike that you can go even a little higher. So we're gonna da do that. And uh, yeah, we didn't get to go to the big mountain, but we came to the little mountain. All right, let's go all the way to the top. And here we have some kind of paraglider. It should be cool. Check it out, a road runner. Funny looking bird. It reminds me of a cartoon. I guess it should be a short hike all the way to the top. It seems to be a popular place with local families to spend a Sunday afternoon here. So let's go to the top. And it looks like they're going to put that paraglider up in the air at any moment now. Oh, pretty steep here at the end of the trail. Almost at the top. Someone left their indelible mark here. Okay, let's go to this uh, lower viewpoint here. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was Tucson in 1880 and yeah, the skyline has changed a little bit. All right, let's go back up and then back down the other side. And let's see if we can spot any other landmarks here around us. Here's the, that bench. We have it all to ourselves now. It is, shall I say, a commanding view. There's the airport, and way out there in the distance, that seems to be that airplane boneyard. Isn't that something? Hundreds and hundreds of planes. All right, let's start heading back then. That was a very nice view. It's like a wash down there. Now, let me see if I can find my way down. <laughs> Is that cool or what? like Icarus flying into the sun. Now let's look for that giant letter A. There it is. That's the blue A right there. I wish I could, I wish I had brought the drone, maybe fly the drone and see the A from the air. That would have been cool. gonna have to trust me on this one is a gigantic letter A. Alright, let's go back. I decided to go around the mountain one more time in the car so we could take a better look at the big A from another perspective. These hillside letters by the way are very common in the western United States usually built by schools or universities back in the early 20th century. And contrary to popular belief, they were not built for early pilots to identify communities from the air. Or so I've read. Here we go, from here we can see a little better the shape of the letter A. Well, this was pretty cool. Perhaps not uh, quite as dramatic as Mount Lemon, but great views of the city. I was listening to the Amateur Traveler podcast, the episode about Tucson, and they recommended a local delicacy called a Sonoran hot dog at this place called El Guero Canelo. It is supposed to come wrapped in fry bread and bacon, so let's visit the original location here in South Tucson. What's a hot dog? Yeah, okay. that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, but wait, she asked with everything in it, and I said yes, so. I have no idea <laughs> what's in it, but I'm just gonna eat it here at their parking lot because let me tell you something, for a uh, fast food place, that was not very fast. And um, yeah, I'll just park here for a couple of minutes, eat my hot dog, and then we'll go someplace else. We'll see. I was really expecting something different. I was expecting more like a Fry bread, that's how they described it on the podcast. But this is not it. Maybe they changed it. Maybe they ran out of fry, fry bread. Who knows? Okay, let's go downtown. I guess expectations are a funny thing. The lady in the podcast said something about fry bread, and that's the only part I remembered. And after further research, apparently, not necessarily. It usually comes in a regular hot dog bun or a French bun, like the one that I had. It was flavorful, just not exactly what I was expecting.
that hot dog wasn't very filling, so I decided to come to this famous place called El Charro, but hmm, I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm not in the mood for El Charro. El Charro. It seems like a you know, fancy place and I'm not that hungry anymore. So let's see if we can find the brewery, actually. Is it me, or this part of town is starting to look like the gentrified brewery type? I think so. Yep, here we are. The Mimosas Burger Fries. Let's check it out. Thunder Canyon. Hmm, looks pretty cool. Here you go. It's a Thunder Canyon IPA. Burger has arrived. All right, that's good. Very nice ambience, and in the bathroom, even the faucets look like draft beer dispensers. All right, that certainly hit the right spot. Now, let's continue exploring with the few hours of daylight we have left. Well, that was very nice, very nice indeed. Good IPA, pretty good burger. We shall return. Thunder Canyon, good brewery, friendly staff. I recommend it. Oh, this is that famous Congress Hotel which dates back to 1919. It seems like a pretty vibrant downtown. It's got character. And we're definitely going to revisit in post-COVID times, as part of one of our yearly trips to Arizona. You know we're probably coming back in 2022, right? Now, there is one more point of interest that is kind of on the way to the RV park. Well, not really, but kind of. And I want to see it, so let's go there. And that's where we're going, the Mission San Javier del Bac, founded in 1692 by Jesuit missionary Padre Eusebio Quino. The current church was built between 1783 and 1797, making it the oldest European structure in Arizona. It is also considered to be the finest example of Spanish colonial architecture in the United States. Unfortunately, as of this filming in late January 2021, the church was still closed. So we must content ourselves with just exploring the outside. The gift shop is open. Thank you. 
just outside the, the RV park here. And I wonder if this is a hiking trail. Or, seems like a road. I don't know, but look at look at all this all this shoya cacti. These are very, very extremely prickly. So you shouldn't get too close to them. You're just gonna walk around a little bit. I see some, some rodents running around. Very cool. Get my hat because it's kind of windy out there today windy and chilly and a little cloudy hopefully it'll, it'll warm up all right let's go to mount lemon let's see if we can make it to mount lemon today <laughs> because yesterday as you saw you know there was a uh, traffic was being diverted but it was sunday and, um, and what i'm assuming is that there were too many people at the mountain and uh, you know covid Have I ever told you about my affinity for this combination of mountains and desert? Up and up the mountain we go! steadily gaining elevation. Okay, let's stop at our first vista point here. Oh wow, look at that! Great views of this northeastern suburb and the city in the distance. You can even see downtown Sentinel Peak and the whole valley. That's amazing. Amazing zoom I have. We've got some more clouds rolling in. Oh well. That was a very nice view. You could see all the way to downtown. I mean, it's cloudy. That's the only thing. It's cloudy day. So it's not as beautiful as it was yesterday, but you can see, you can see all the way to, to downtown. Hopefully these clouds will remain high. So we won't uh, lose too much visibility. That's the whole point of, to, to go, of going to, you know, to, a, to a high elevation, right? To get that commanding view. Uh, try again, why don't you want to connect to my GoPro now? Next up, Molino Canyon Vista. Let's check out Molino Canyon Vista here. Uh, doesn't look like much from the trailhead, but I guess I guess you have to go all the way up there. Yeah, let's try and see as many of these viewpoints as possible. It is pretty windy up here. I guess this is it. Well, maybe a little farther down. Yeah, let's go all the way to the edge, but not too close. Okay, that's close enough. Yeah, I think this is as far as I want to go.
very interesting, all this desert vegetation. Well, it is getting uncomfortably cold up here, so I might switch to my, my brother, right? It's right here. I might switch to my, my puffy jacket back there. It said partly cloudy on the forecast. This is more like overcast, so I'm gonna check the weather. The vegetation, by the way, is going to start changing soon as we start gaining more elevation. Oh, Timble Peak Vista. We gotta stop there. Here we are. is Timble Peak. I was reading that uh, exhibit there. Very interesting how elevation, it's uh, in this case, uh, when it comes to vegetation and climate, it equals latitude in a sense. The, the higher we go, it's like if we were at a much higher latitude. And as you can see that we have different trees now up here. Not too many cacti anymore. There's a glimpse of Tucson, and even the views from the road are not bad, not bad at all. Let me tell you, it is getting more and more striking as we keep going up. Welcome to the wilderness. See, right now we are here at this latitude, as far as uh, altitude, which will be like a pine oak woodland. And here we are, very cool. And uh, we even have some hoodies up there. Look at that. Oh, I just noticed the waterfall. Quite the work of engineering, this road, if I may say so myself. The vegetation keeps on changing. There's a picnic area coming up, and it is a winter wonderland too. And there's a restroom, so let's stop for a few minutes. It is beautifully wintry up here. I just found out that my shoes are <laughs> are not exactly the best to walk in this somewhat hard packed uh, snow. It's almost like ice. So yeah, I didn't bring my hiking shoes. Yeah, well, I just went to the bathroom and uh, let's keep going up. Let's see what it looks like up there. All of a sudden, it is a pine forest up here. It is a very nice picnic area here. But there are lots of picnic areas and campgrounds around here. It's very nice. What a difference in climate, right? Once we get up here and, uh, I mean, it's not that cold, but it's just visually, you see, you have um, snow and the vegetation, you know, no more saguaro cacti. Look at these rocks.
Manzanita Vista. Sure, why not? Here's looking back towards the pinnacles and the view towards the valley. Check it out. That's the airplane boneyard. That's incredible. It seems to go on forever. One of these days, one of these days I have to manage to visit. And I know, I'm kind of obsessed with the thing. It is a spectacular drive. Windy Point Vista. This has got to be one of the main ones. Well, this one is called the Windy Point uh, Vista. And not a whole lot of wind, luckily. Or is it windy? Whatever the name, the views are pretty spectacular from here. Probably the best. And those hoodoos, very peculiar. Look at that. Well, yeah, that's what I would call a, um, a commanding view of Tucson from up here. It's fabulous. Now that the sun wants to come out, we can see downtown much more clearly with the A Mountain. You know, Sentinel Peak right behind it. Also I-10. Let's hike all the way to the end. I mean, even though there's snow on the ground, it is it is not cold at all. I mean, I'm, I'm even starting to break like a sweat. Of course, you don't sweat in these dry climates, which is kind of weird. You just get like this tingly feeling. There is beauty in every direction. Look at that. Maybe we are now like up here, you know, like. <laughs> A lot of trash, you know, uh, laying around this area, this, this rest area here, this vista point. But I mean, if you close the bathrooms due to COVID and you close the trash cans due to COVID, who knows why? I mean, there's no excuse to throw trash on the ground, but if you have nowhere to throw it, I mean, it's, uh, it's not helping the situation, let's put it that way. It's getting hot. I'm gonna have to put the air conditioner. different colors, and you would think we're in Bryce Canyon. Let's stop one more time.
Yep, it is the San Pedro River Valley. Very nice. Considerably more snow on this side of the mountain. This is, I think we're reaching like the northern side of the mountain, which you know the sun doesn't hit it as much. Uh, but uh, also, we're high, we're 8,000 feet. You know how the cold weather sometimes makes you want to go to the bathroom, and uh, more and more, I'm finding these picnic areas to be completely full. Check it out, a snowman! Definitely, the higher we go up the mountain, the more crowded it feels. And some of these picnic areas, the parking lots are completely to capacity. Y'all realize we're still in Arizona, right? Just checking, and it is this diversity in climate and scenery, one of the reasons why I love this state so much. Let's stop here real quick for the view. Oh wow, that's gotta be the summit, right? We are arriving at the small community of Summer Haven, very aptly named, as the average high in the summer months is only in the mid-70s Fahrenheit, mid-20s Celsius, and I'm sure it is a great respite from the scorching temperatures down in the valley. It is probably slower than normal today on a Monday, but it is very cool to see, and if I was hungry or thirsty, we would have definitely stopped. But parking is kind of limited, so we're just gonna continue going up to the summit. Hmm, cookie cabin pizzeria. Tempting. Okay, dead end, let's go back. Mount Lemon Hotel here seems to be undergoing renovations, but it seems nice. I wouldn't mind staying in one of those cabins. Let's go up to Ski Valley. Skiing, by the way, one of those things like many other I never quite got around to learning. But let's check it out. Okay, it seems crowded. The road is closed, so... And the parking is gonna be a challenge up here. I was thinking of going to that, into that restaurant. But... I think I'm just gonna turn around. far more, way more cars than there is parking up here. Yeah, no wonder they weren't letting people in yesterday. <laughs> this place is, today's Monday, it's not even noon. And, uh, And we're back by Summer Haven. And there's a pullout, so let's take one final look at this winter wonderland.
It is lovely up here. But now we have nowhere to go but down. We're back in the land of the juniper. Soon, we'll also be back in the land of the saguaro. And here they are, like standing at attention, welcoming us back to the valley. Hundreds, thousands of them. Pretty long break, had some lunch, and now we're gonna continue exploring. Head north on Pincushion towards Staghorn, then turn right onto Staghorn. I've decided we're probably not gonna do any museums. I wanted to do that uh, desert museum that is supposed to be more like a, almost like a, um, like a zoo. With, but I don't know. Where to go? Where to go? Well, if your first guess was the airplanes, you're absolutely right! And I know, normally there are tours at the Pima Air and Space Museum. And when we return to Tucson, I promise we're gonna do all that and El Charo and the other museums and many other things. But we have to work with what we've got here in early 2021 and make the best of it. I always imagined seeing this in person would be something really cool, but the experience has definitely surpassed my expectations. 
even from this vantage point, just driving by it. Now, how about another drive-by? Let's drive by the Pima Air and Space Museum. Yeah, this one we also have to visit at some point. Let's plan for January 2022. They do have RV parking. This area here to the right, with all the RVs, is called Snyder Hill, and it is BLM land, free boondocking right here on the outskirts of Tucson. Had I not found a place to stay with hookups, this would have been it. Well, there is Snyder Hill right there. Coming up next, Tucson Mountain Park at Old Tucson, which I've been reliably informed remains permanently closed, but I wanna see what I can. It used to be an old western movie set turned theme park. Well, hopefully it will reopen someday. I've heard it used to be a pretty cool place, a total tourist trap, but a cool one at that. Let's check out this picnic area. It is very nice, actually. I mean, look at that view, and here we are, by the way, right next to that desert museum I was talking about. Look at that! Is that a coyote? I don't think I've ever seen one in the wild. It's beautiful. Perhaps I shouldn't get out of the car right now, just in case. Goodbye, Mr. Coyote. We're going to stop by the Desert Museum, but I doubt we're going in. Hmm, the Desert Ark. Interesting. Yeah, I asked, and it's really uh, too late to, to really enjoy the museum today, so I'd come back tomorrow. With trailer in tow, they have our RV and bus parking right here, so we can do that. Let's go into the into Saguaro National Park, 
check it out real quick and do not feed the coyotes yeah that was a coyote we saw yeah this is going to be our last point of interest today Saguaro National Park The visitor center is closed. Even the bathrooms are closed, but got my map. Now we're gonna just do the loop drive, go up to this place called Signal Hill, it's supposed to have some petroglyphs, and, uh, and then we're going back. go for a quick little hike very nice picnic area here and um, we have toilets okay I guess it is that way it's not very well marked Art. I think the petroglyphs are all the way at the top. Rattlesnake area. We'll try to be careful. And say, don't forget to look back. Sometimes the best views man, are, are behind us. Look at, look at those mountains back there. And what a beautiful place this is. That is Picacho Peak, isn't it? That's where we're going next. And these are the prehistoric petroglyphs. Amazing. looks a little more modern is that like a number eight 8.3 K sometimes I wonder how do they know I'm sure they've done some carbon testing or something like that right that is a beautiful mountain back there Fascinating, fascinating to see the ancient uh, petroglyphs, you know? I think I'm gonna do a little bit of that uh, trail. Maybe not the whole thing, but um, this one right here. It's uh, the Cactus Wren Trail. Encinas Trail. I'm just gonna go to the top of that hill, basically. And then I think we're gonna call it a day. Saguaros, they, they almost look like people, don't they? With their arms. <laughs> well, this is it. This is the extent of my climbing today. Uh, we're gonna do the rest of that loop road and then we're gonna call it a night. Beautiful. It is definitely beautiful here. No wonder it's a national park, because they usually are mind-blowing places. I think this would be a fitting end to our stay here in Tucson.
Tomorrow, we're going to the place where I saw saguaro cacti for the first time ever, Picacho Peak State Park. Alright, this was very nice Cactus Country RV Resort here. Their, their Wi-Fi actually works pretty good, which is uh, it's always a plus and they're very nice, the very pleasant. Right Only thing you have to show up early, they close the office like at 4 p.m. Another plus about this campground, it is right next to I-10, but not too close. Not close enough so that you will hear road noise or anything like that, so that's good. The trip to Picacho takes about an hour, so it could easily be a day trip from Tucson. In fact, we can already see it in the distance. Are those parachutes? This is so exciting! The plan is to climb all the way to the top tomorrow morning. We are really early, but you never know. If the site is available, sometimes they let you check in early. But we are in luck, my site is available. It looks like the camp host is raking my side right now. Perfect timing. Hello, pelican heads. This is one of those places that I've been meaning to visit for a long time. Hold on, it's coming. That's Picacho Peak. No, your ears don't deceive you. I had to turn on the AC. Even though it's not like super hot, but it was getting uncomfortably hot in there, especially when it was sunny. For some reason, I mean, I did a Pelican Head update uh, about two hours ago and it was, I mean, we still have some blue skies back there, but we have very gray skies here. Uh, going uh, looking towards uh, Picacho Peak. I think I'm gonna go for a walk and, uh, and then we're gonna, we're gonna make some dinner here. As I said, I'm just gonna walk around the park a little bit here, just get the lay of the land. And tomorrow morning when it's cooler, we're gonna go all the way to to the top of uh, Picacho Peak. Yeah, this is an awesome sight here in Picacho Peak State Park. It is an impressive mountain, almost Angel's Landing-esque. That's gonna be Mount Lemon over there. And look at all these cacti. What a special place. Got this trail that you know goes along the the park road, and uh, supposedly it goes all the way to the, the, the visitor center and the entrance, and, uh, and a short trail that I might want to take today. The long trail to the top of the of the mountain. That's tomorrow. Although I shouldn't do tomorrow what I could do today, right? Just in case. But tomorrow the weather is supposed to be better. Not that today is bad, but you know what I mean. This reminds me of my 2018 road trip coming out here. You know, my first cross country road trip. Um, you know, I had seen Yoka cacti uh, back in Texas and then the Choya 
uh, where we stayed last night. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I remember right after Tucson, I remember coming here and I, and I look to the left, you know, I'm, I'm going west on I-10 and I see all these little things sticking out of the, of the mountain. And all of a sudden I realized there was a water cacti. And uh, it almost, uh, I almost got emotional, you know, to, to, to realize that I had arrived to this part of the country and uh, where I had never actually been. I had never been to this part of the country before, before then. So, um, yeah, this, this place brings fun memories. I remember looking, looking on, the, on, the, on the driver's side window, seeing Picacho Peak and all this uh, cacti. I didn't know they had gators here. Oh no, it's not a gator. It's a dead saguaro. Very interesting. And at the same time, kind of oddly sad, sobering, to see the innards of a dead saguaro, also called ribs. It's skeleton, if you will. Another dead saguaro. These plants can last up to 200 years, so that must have been a very old one. Back to the campground we go. Should, should be about two miles. Maybe I should try and hitch a ride back. That is something you don't see as much back east, all this like mile long, uh, miles long trains. I mean, that train goes almost all the way back to Tucson, I think. Yeah, lots of commerce, lots of cargo going east-west along this, uh, this railroad tracks. One going, one coming. It is constant, one after the other. I love this part of the park right here because we have all kinds of different, you know, species, species, varieties of cactus. And, uh, and it feels like a cactus garden, you know, almost. We even had some sh some choya back there. All we're missing is like, a, is that considered a cactus, the, the, the yucca? Interesting. With the arms all tangled up. So it's C1. Very nice. I'm pretty famished, so let's get something to eat. It is time for another RV cooking show. Yeah, it is still pretty frozen. I'm gonna have to defrost it somehow. I'm gonna start with some bacon and then we'll make the burgers and uh, I don't have hamburger buns, but I have some brioche bread there that that's what I'm gonna use.
will cook those for tomorrow and right now let's eat the ones we have there I was gonna do some onions too but I didn't feel like complicating myself with that so I'm just gonna add the bacon maybe some barbecue sauce and we'll eat I'm gonna do some of that barbecue sauce from San Antonio mmm A beautiful morning. All right, let's go for a little hike, but not so little. I want to hike all the way to the top of Picacho Peak, and uh, something tells me I should drive to the trailhead, but I'm just gonna walk because I want to do like a loop, you know, go all the way up there and then come back on a different route. So we're just gonna walk to the trailhead. It should be, um, I don't know, about a mile. And today, I've, you know, I got my proper hiking shoes. So just in case, just to be ready for any type of terrain here. By the way, beautiful campground and I'm technically <laughs> walking on a site, but this site is vacant. What a beautiful place this is. I thought it was gonna be good, but not, not this good. <laughs> Alright, came here to the day use area for a bathroom break and check it out, Sunset Vista Trailhead. I have a feeling this is going to be a pretty strenuous hike but I'm mentally prepared and I've got plenty of water and two energy bars for lunch somewhere up there. Okay, here we have like a 3D representation of the trail, this is it. And then here is a junction with Hunter Trail. Up to the junction is 2.6 miles and uh, an 895 in elevation and then i hear there are cables that you know like it's angels landing style so we shall see purple hiking boots sample water gloves for the cableways i forgot to bring uh, gloves uh, looks like we have brand new stairs here well, so far very nice up and up and up. <sighs> Very nice. It's like everywhere you look. Let me zoom in on those mountains back there so you can see them. It's everywhere you look is beautiful. And they look like two cacti hugging over there. That does look like Picacho Peak, doesn't it? We have to go all the way, all the way up there. a cave down there here's the view here's the view looking back just uh, the one mile mark 
one mile and this is 2.6 miles to the junction so uh, we're not even halfway there yet wow look at that view What a beautiful place this is. I keep saying it, but it is this combination of mountains and desert what makes Arizona such a magical place. That is beautiful. I love the contrast of the choya, which is bright with the suaro and the other cacti that I don't remember the names right now. But we're now fully in the on the back, on the back side of the mountain, for sure. By the way, the trail not as solitary as it may look sometimes. There are several of us hiking it. We're just keeping our distance. We're starting to gain elevation here. The views are getting better and better. We can even see the Pinal Airplane Boneyard from here. Uh, it's, it's been up and up and up, relentlessly. We continue going up on these uh, switchbacks. Just took a water break because you know, gotta hydrate here in the desert. Yeah, it's pretty strenuous. I won't lie to you. A little sketchy here. This part of the trail, I mean, it's a long way down. Here we are, got to the first cables, and I forgot to bring gloves. Cables and steep stairs, and the precipice on the other side. Oh, now for the fun part. I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to show you this one real time. This is amazing. This is an amazing place. Look at that. Totally worth the effort. Apparently this is the hardest part coming up here. I'm gonna have to put away the camera because I forgot to bring my, my head mount, but I'll let you know how it goes. It's gonna be interesting on the way down, that's for sure. Look at that, we've almost gone all the way around the mountain. Now looking east towards I-10. I guess that's what they call the fun part. Yeah, don't tell anybody, but a little more strenuous than I was expecting. It looks like this is the final cable stretch all the way to the top. Oh, 
Wow, look at the campground all the way down there. I guess it is through here. It doesn't even look like a trail, but it's gotta be. We've made it to the summit of Picacho Peak. Oh man, that was strenuous. Oh, we do have a mailbox up here, so you can like leave a note, say that you were here. That's pretty cool. Sign the notebook. That's the RV park down there. I like our campground much better. Although they probably have, uh, have full hookups down there. All right, made it all the way to the top. Now we have nowhere to go but down. So let's take it slow. And we'll make it. All right, wish me luck. I could not find the marker, you know, that usually, you know, the geodesic marker that, you know, marks the, the, the elevation and this and that and the survey marker, basically. But maybe it's under the mailbox. That was pretty intense and that's not even the worst of them. So <laughs> ah. yeah, I still have this part to go and then down there and then there's another one. But once in a while you have to stop and Enjoy the views. Let me drink some water before we do this one. This is the, the crossroads. Maybe I'll go down through the Hunter Trail, which is much shorter. Much shorter, but more strenuous. I've learned it's not always easier on the way down, especially when you're already exhausted from the climb up. You know what, what I just realized? Tragedy. I don't have any cold IPAs. They're all warm. So I'll put one in the freezer as soon as I get back because I think today I earned it. I guess that is, that's the saddle up there. So yeah, we got more cables. I think we've made it to the famous saddle and this should be mostly downhill from here on. One can only hope, right? Ah. All right, let's do it. There's the RV park down there. My only concern is that I'm down to my last uh, bottle of water.
we should make it okay. Look at the size of that train. You have no idea how tired I am. But we're almost there. We're almost there. It's rated really difficult, not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Should have said something before, right? <laughs> oh, I forgot. We still have to walk all the way back to the campground. Oh, this last mile. Going to the campground. Do I hear the sound of air conditioners? Yeah, it is like 78 degrees. Such a beautiful sight. Yeah, home sweet home. And it is getting warm. And I am getting hungry. And I can't believe we went all the way up there. Okay, this seems like a good choice. A couple of weeks ago I bought this at Bucky's, so... Let's let's put some some rub on it and cook it. Too much, you think? Cheers. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here, looking after the grill, enjoying the view. My two Suwaro cacti. Mmm, who should I watch? It is the most spectacular desert sunset I've seen this year. Most appropriate, since this is our last night, for now, here in the land of the Suwaro cactus. Well, good morning. I don't care what the groundhog said, it's starting to feel like summer here. And even though the thermometer says like, you know, 60s, high 60s, 69, I believe, it feels, it's, it's that desert sun once it hits you, right? And it's very sunny today, as you can see, not a cloud in the sky. This campground, very nice. I was, I was gonna say surprised. I wasn't pleasantly surprised. I had, I had heard great things about Picacho Peak here. In 800 but, feet, turn right. But for sure, it's all true. Now, considering it's getting hot down here, I don't know about you, but I think I'm ready for a change of scenery. So we're gonna go north. We've been hanging out with the saguaro cacti for, for too long now. Definitely gotta be in my top 10 campgrounds to catch a pink here, if not top 5, but probably top 10. It's very nice. There is a somewhat rare sight. A passenger train. You don't really get to see those as much anymore, compared to the sometimes constant super long freight train traffic. Here we are at our first point of interest, the Casa Grande Ruins. Yeah, Casa Grande Ruins. This was not necessarily in the plan, but we're here, you know. I got my map and uh, they do have a self-guided tour, so let's do that. This is it. While no one really knows exactly the purpose of this four-story building, we know that the ancestral Sonoran Desert people were an agricultural society. Quite advanced, actually. 
Somehow they learn how to divert water from the four major rivers in this area with the most rudimentary tools, but they managed to do it. And this right here was their walled city. And at the center of it all, the Casa Grande. Nowadays, the Casa Grande seems to be home to lots of pigeons. It may have also been an observatory of some kind. The walls align north-south, east-west, and the sun and the moon line up with certain holes. Here's one of the smaller structures. Let's go check out the exhibits at the picnic area. And there's construction going on. Yeah, who were these ancestral Sonoran desert people? Apparently, that's what remains of an ancient ball court. You know, like a small stadium. And there's another one of those leather mountains. So common here in the West. Oh, well, just had a quick lunch and... Yeah, definitely a, a cool stop here. Kind of serendipitous, if you will. I mean, I was aware that this place was here, but it was not in the plan to stop here. So continue to Walmart. We have about an hour now. I'm, I'm gonna stop at Walmart, resupply certain things. I'm running out of paper towels and, and trash bags, and I'm gonna get a, a fresh new package of water. Yes, even though I use the Berkey water filter, the way I do it, I buy water bottles and then refill them with the Berkey. And I always have a bunch of them in the fridge, but I don't like to reuse them too many times. And at this point, I've been on the road for almost a month, believe it or not. So I think it is time. Hmm, approaching the mountains. It is Tonto National Forest. We won't be seeing too many more of those. drive, huh? In any case, we are approaching my adopted hometown's namesake of Miami, Arizona. So let's stop at this pullout for the photo op. It is self-proclaimed copper center of the world, and it is indeed a copper boom town. And here to the right, we have this shrine to the Virgin Mary, built by a veteran of the Korean War. It is so interesting to find things like this on the side of the road. I know, it's the wrong music, but I'm thinking of the other Miami right now. My Miami. You can see all the copper mines on the hill to the left here. Very, very cool. Oh, 
Okay, let's stop by Walmart and resupply. This is actually the next town, called Globe. I'm thinking this may be one of those more about the journey than the destination. I mean, I don't know how beautiful the White Mountains are, I've never been there, but this drive is going to be hard to top half. snow I see on the ground. We are definitely in the land of the juniper now. I don't know yet what that is we are approaching, but it looks amazing. You know what that is? That is the Salt River Canyon. Well, look at that. That's truly beautiful. Let's go to another vantage point. This was unexpected. Definitely not part of the original plan and uh, what a great discovery. I guess we're going all the way down to the river. I see a bridge down there. Here's the bridge over the Salt River and the rest area. We definitely should have stopped and it looks like there is a pedestrian bridge too. Oh well, like I usually say, Another time, perhaps. Let's take a break. It's a scenic view, a uh, quarter mile, but I'm gonna check this one out first. This doesn't get much more scenic than this now, does it? This is the actual scenic view. Much better. We can even see the river at the bottom of the canyon. Hmm, cliff dwellings perhaps? It is almost it is almost like a mini Grand Canyon out here. This is incredible. I had no I had no idea. Arizona is such a diverse state, I keep saying it, but especially when it comes to landscape. It is almost unbelievable that just a couple of hours ago we were in the Sonoran Desert and now we are here, approaching the White Mountains. And I have a confession to make. 
I haven't done much research on this area, at least not at this stage of the trip. All I know is that longtime viewer, actually podcast listener Anthony Antrit on YouTube, he bought a property, a homestead in this area about a year ago, and I want to check it out. I would also love to have a piece of Arizona to my name. He recommended I stay at Sholo Lake Campground, so that's where we're going today, and tomorrow we may explore the area a little bit. And now we are in Sholo proper. The name of the town actually comes from an interesting story about a poker game where the stakes were a ranch, actually, and one of the players said, if you can show low, you win, and the other player showed a deuce of clubs, the lowest possible card. And the name stuck, and nowadays Show Low's main street is actually called the Deuce of Clubs in remembrance. Well, yeah, this is where I ended up, Show Low Lake Campground. And uh, yeah, there is snow. And I chose a pull-through site here because, as you know, I don't have four-wheel drive, and um, and it would really it would really suck getting stuck out here. So it's it's muddy, it's very wet. But I'm gonna stay here for a couple of nights. I'm gonna test out the internet now, see if uh, if it works, so we can do that live stream tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, and um, oops, you see, you see, my feet are, are sinking. It's like quicksand. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So, we have some pristine uh, snow here. Very nice, and it's turned out to be a beautiful day. It's gonna be chilly tonight, it's gonna go into the 20s, but we can handle it. It's, uh, it's a totally dry camping, I just filled up my water, but we don't have electricity or sewer or anything like that, so we're gonna boondock it for a couple of nights here in the freezing cold. Sunset is a us, so let's go see the lake. Uh, did I mention dry camping here for $18? Uh, I must stay two nights. I just did a test of the internet, and it's barely enough, but barely enough to do a live stream, so... I have a feeling it's gonna be a nice sunset, but let's see if we can make it to the lake. I have no idea. I need to get a lay of the land here. Check it out, it's a beautiful lake, beautiful lake down here. It might be too cold for the banana boat, but whoops, maybe I should pay attention to where I'm walking. Seems like it would be a cool summertime destination. What am I doing here in the dead of winter? I have no idea. It's Anthony's fault. Yeah, Anthony, you'll be meeting him tomorrow. I can just imagine, in the summertime, with a bunch of people boating and swimming. I just realized they also have these lake from campsites here. How come there's no one here? Hmm, maybe because it is freezing and the temperature is dropping rapidly as the sun goes down. It is kind of disorienting when you arrive at a place like this for the first time, but and the, the, all this snow is, is kind of intimidating, but it's a huge campground, huge campground. It is frigid out here. Uh, we woke up to 21 degrees Fahrenheit, which I have no idea how much it is in Celsius, but it is way below freezing. And uh, well, here we are. It is a beautiful morning. And, uh, let me see. I'm gonna see if I can get some firewood. By the way, everything frozen, of course. As, as it happens. 
Look at that. A layer of ice on the top of everything. Hear it. Look at that. Look at how beautiful those are. We don't get to see those in Florida. I'm going to walk around a little bit and uh, see what's going on. Maybe I'll fly the drone once the temperature goes above freezing. Frozen and very slippery. the puddles are completely frozen. It may not seem like much to you, but for this Florida guy, that's amazing. Look at that. It's just a top. <laughs> Let's cook some pancakes on this frigid morning. By the way, people like me from the tropics, we always get silly excited or freak out about weird, strange stuff like water freezing outside of a refrigerator and snow and strange things like that. I mean, it did snow in Miami on January 19th, 1977, but no one remembers that. Not only because it was a long time ago, but because it lasted for about an hour and it melted even quicker than that. So that explains my excitement. I actually have no idea what there is to do here, so before we go into town, let's fly around the lake a little bit. That's a cute building. Let's check out Cholo City Park. Well, just uh, wandering around town this morning here at uh, this is a Cholo. City Park. Sholo seems to be one of those places where there is not a whole lot to do in town, but in the surrounding area. And you can use Sholo as your home base while exploring the White Mountains. Let's go for a little hike. There's a whole white mountain trail system. We are here, Sholo Bluff, one and a half miles. So, it should be easy. Let's go on a little hike. By the way, I'm still a little sore from, uh, from Picacho Peak a couple of days ago. Oh, look at that beautiful bluebird. What is that? Yeah, something tells me I should have brought uh, those spikes for the shoes. We'll see, we'll see how slippery it is. If it is too slippery, it is slippery. Oh, and I left them. Oh yeah, it's very slippery. I left them in Minitini. I'm not gonna be able to do this. <laughs> That's the thing, it's really hard packed snow. It's, it's almost like ice by this time, you know? It's a nice trail, walking uphill here, but nothing extraordinary about it. I'm just gonna go back down. That was enough exercise for today. It 
is beautiful out here although up there it was a little steeper and a little more slippery than I'd like to admit but I'm trying to avoid the ice very very muddy yeah that's it I made it I made it through the mud I'm all muddy even my pants are muddy what can you do Let's get out of town, east on US 60. I want to see the area where we could potentially build Pelicamp West, you know, another homestead. Although we are here in the desert, so maybe I should name it after the local fauna. Where the pavement ends, that's where you'll find that hidden gem. This is pretty nice, with the views of the mountains, and that's the idea, you know, just a place to park the RV. Water seems to be the only real issue around here. I haven't been able to get in touch with Anthony yet, but I know this to be the general area, and I do see a handful of RVs scattered among all the juniper. And land around here seems to be pretty cheap. Utilities might be the most expensive part. I mean, I don't see any power poles, and this is high desert. Hmm, more research shall go into this. I do like the views of the mountains. And the high desert, strangely compelling. Especially the parts with all the junipers. I see a house here, and I see utility poles. Here's a slightly different area, and we have electricity, so it would be a matter of water and septic. Something like this, to the right. That would be Pelican West. Uh-oh. Dead end. Let's go back. Let's go back into town, because it is Friday, and I have a live stream to do. An old fifth wheel, and that's probably an outhouse. Eventually, I got in touch with Anthony and we went to nearby Pine Top for a pre live stream IPA. Here we are at Pine Top Brewery with Andrew. Hey man, cheers. Cheers. Great to meet you, finally. Good stuff. Yeah, good IPA. By the way, Andrew has he's been a podcast listener for a long time and he has a YouTube channel too, so I'll put a link somewhere. So there's Anthony and coming to you from the White Mountains in beautiful Arizona. And I'm here killing time because uh, this is RV Chat Live <laughs> for today, February 5th, 2021. I hope you've had a, as, as good a time as I had here with, with Anthony and uh, Lane. 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 Yep. And Anthony and Lane. Say hello, everybody. Because I'm riding, riding in my RV. Wherever I want to be. I forgot my guitar in Miami. In my RV. Good night, everybody. Have a great week and happy Friday. And uh, I'll see you on the road next week. Where will we be next week? Well, you have to tune in to find out. <laughs> Bye now. Well, good morning. I was gonna do some grilling, but I don't know about this. Look at that. It's frozen. It's frozen shot. And this water. Yeah, also frozen solid out here. We'll give it a shot. I'm ready to depart this uh, frigid place here and uh, check it out. My levelers are frozen solid on the ground. What to do? I need to whack him with something. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I do have a hair dryer. I might do, might use that. <laughs> well, on the road again. Now 
we go. Um, I forgot the name of the town we're going to. It's full hookups. It's basically one of those stops where I can take a long shower because uh, don't tell anybody else, but I'm starting to live like an RVer, you know. Showers. Uh, since I've been like conserving water, I've been low. Even though I filled up here, I didn't fill all the way. Uh, I've been conserving water, and the showers haven't been haven't been as regular as they've been in the past. If this is too much information. Let me know. So, Walmart, and then full hookups. We are driving about two hours west to Payson, Arizona, which should put us about halfway to the Phoenix area, which is what's coming next. Illy is flying into Sky Harbor in a couple of days and we'll be together for the rest of the trip. Yep, good times coming! By the way, this Arizona 260 route is supposed to be an epically beautiful drive. an RV cooking show and let me turn on some lights here so you can kind of see what's going on and um, yeah let's take advantage that we have unlimited water unlimited power I'm doing laundry you know a bunch of things because uh, after today we're gonna be again dry camping for a couple of days so I'm gonna make my classic uh, beef stew that I haven't done in a while and I for a while I was doing it in the in the instant pot uh, but I think it comes out better when you do it the classic way it looks like we might be a little off level anyway we're going to melt some butter and brown the meat we're gonna do some wine for reduction purposes and to drink of course Who was it uh, was it emeril that said never cook with the wine you wouldn't drink here we go. I'm gonna add water until it covers the meat and will simmer for about an hour or so. Bring it to a boil and then we'll lower it so it's you know, kind of simmers for... I don't think we're gonna need to do an hour, maybe in half an hour. We'll it ended up being a little over an hour. I even did some laundry while this was simmering. Let's peel a potato. Let's dice a potato. Let's add some mushrooms. Mmm, some celery too. Now for the sofrito, we've got some onions. Half a green pepper. Salt and pepper to taste. I've got some frozen veggies, not exactly part of the original recipe, but why not? some garlic and manzanilla olives paprika, cumin, oregano you know, the usual stuff my Cuban cooking wine and tomato sauce mm, some of that hot sauce Neon Pony sent me I think it is time to mix them both let it rip for another 15 minutes or so, and I think we've got ourselves very good stew. If I may say so myself.
You could use a little more salt, but mmm. It's pretty good. Well, it is ready. So as soon as it cools down a little bit, we're gonna eat. Yeah, that came out really good. Really, really good. Different, but good. Now on the road again. It's just a nice, quiet stay here in the Basin RV Resort. For what I wanted, it was perfect. I just wanted one night with full hookups, you know, get some work done. And um, now we're going to the Phoenix area. It is uncommon for me to edit a section of the road like this as one long take, uncut, real time, but I think this deserves it. It is perhaps fate or nature's way of saving the best for last. I had no idea this stretch of road was going to be so striking. And just like that, as we continue our descent, the juniper will give way to different species of cacti, like this nopal here to the right. And we're back in the land of the Saguaro, once again at the northern boundary of the Sonoran Desert. I'm going to meet up with Jason and Misty for lunch here in Chandler and then off we go to the Superstition Mountains. Remember Jason? We flew around San Antonio in his Cessna at the beginning of this season. Well, they happen to be in Arizona as well and we've been meaning to catch up. Here they are, that's their Airstream. What do our viewers do when they meet up along the road? We take a picture in front of our rigs because that's what you do, right? We can see them in the distance, the Superstition Mountains. This is not quite bucket list, but almost, huh? almost. I've been meaning to stay at Lost Dutchman State Park for a few years now, and I was finally able to get a reservation. Isn't this like the greatest view of the Superstition Mountains? Well, greetings from Last Dutchman State Park. Let's go into Goldfield really quick because I thought I heard the sound of gunfire. And it is the weekend, so they are probably doing their Wild West reenactment every hour, and I've never been able to catch that. Goldfield, by the way, mostly a reconstruction of the original mining town, and let's be honest, kind of tourist trappy, but in a good way. It is a fun town. Yeah. 
it looks like the reenactment is underway. Can't really tell what's going on, but it is fun nonetheless. And it looks like the actors are having fun too. It is actually very well acted and choreographed. The hat flying off at the end was a very nice touch. There's the narrow gauge train where they give you tours of the town. I took it once, it is actually very informative. I think it is time to go into the saloon, but first, let's explore the rest of the town really quick. It is not that big. Alright, let's go into the saloon. This place is so much fun. The owner, Cowboy Dan, he's usually bartending and he's quite a character. Sometimes they have live music out here, but not today apparently. They have one IPA on tap, so that's good. And before we go, let's walk around a little bit. It is a pretty cool saloon, if you ask me. Hmm, I guess sometimes they have live music in here too. Oh yeah, I just had my customary IPA here at the Mammoth Saloon. Very nice cowboy Dan there as always. Uh, you know, he's like a, like an iconic figure here in this town. And uh, you know, I'm glad I came when I came. I got, I got the last uh, gun show at 4 p.m. And uh, now that the town starts to die down at this time of the day, I mean, they still have the train going around and, and the mine tours. And, uh, and the saloon is kind of empty. But look at that, look at, look at Superstition Mountain back there. That's, that alone <laughs> right there is the price of admission, which coming into the town itself is free, but of course you're always gonna spend some money. I just uh, spent uh, $6 for an APA, so there you go. And now I'm gonna get back to the last uh, Dutchman State Park. Yeah. What a place. Uh, I 
middle of the West, as I've said many times before. Yes, this was a very cool short visit to Goldfield. And I really just came for the gunfight and the IPA, but there's a lot to do here for the whole family. Mine tours, the train ride, the shooting gallery, good times. It is Super Bowl Sunday, so I'm gonna watch the game with a view. Let's go for a little hike here at Superstition Mountain. Yeah, very nice campground, by the way. Last night we had the most beautiful sun sunset, and uh, it's a little bit late in the la in the day here. It's almost noon. Beautiful weather today, and uh, yeah, let's go into the mountain. Site number one here. That's. Quite the minimalist uh, setup right there. All right, we're gonna do the Siphon Draw Trail here. It's uh, one mile, I think it's just to the base of the mountain. Whether we continue or not, it depends on how tired I get. <laughs> here you are here, so we're gonna do the Siphon Draw. Up to here. And then the flat iron. Yeah, that's the flat iron up there. Probably not gonna make it all the way there. So now technically outside uh, Lost Dutchman State Park into Tonto National Forest. I just got a call from Monte Vista RV Resort where I was expecting to stay tomorrow. Apparently they don't want me. They have a length uh, minimum of 24 feet and an age minimum of 55 years old. Luckily, I am shorter and younger, so I'll give my money to someone else. What can you do? <laughs> Here's looking back towards the valley and check it out, we've got some base jumpers. Yep, opened up we go. <laughs> Look at that view. Look at that view. I guess this is the end of the maintained trail. Right here. It is getting more strenuous and difficult to hike. And to be honest, I am not feeling 100% today. I really don't know how much longer I want to go. It's getting strenuous. I'm a little low energy today, but it's a beautiful hike, I mean, look at those mountains up ahead. And the valley behind. Yeah, it is a, shall I say, commanding view of the valley and the Apache Junction suburbs. I can only imagine how much better it would be from the flat iron but we can't do that today. There's Goldfield, and what a great view. 
one of these days, when we are better prepared, we will tackle the rest of the trail. Yeah, I think this might be as far as I want to go today. Let's start heading back down. Amazing. Some nice houses around here. That's the way to do it, on a horse. Apparently, there's an area between the state park and the wilderness from which you are allowed to fly a drone. So our neighbor at the campground, Mikey, from Mikey Barbie Wanderings, let me use his drone footage, since I couldn't get mine up in the air. Very nice views. Now let's take the Apache Trail to Tortilla Flat. It is definitely one of the most scenic drives in this part of Arizona. We are approaching the canyon. Here we are, Canyon Lake Vista. Let's stop for a few minutes. Perhaps not the absolute best view of the lake, but still breathtaking. This would be a good opportunity to have a boat or a friend with one. This is one of two historic one-lane bridges. Here is the second one-lane bridge. And there it is, Tortilla Flat. The outhouse is out of order. It is an authentic remnant of an old west town and the last surviving stagecoach stop along the Apache Trail. Let's go into the saloon. They advertise good food. Maybe they have good beer too. The bar stools are saddles. That's really cool. But the bar itself is closed or was closed as of February 2021. Table service only. And I'm really not hungry, or thirsty for that matter, so we're going to continue exploring the Apache Trail. Here's what remains of a stagecoach, perhaps, and a narrow gauge railroad, and other random artifacts. Perhaps this was the stage station, or actually, it was the school, established in 1932, so it's not really that old. And nowadays it is a museum. Lots of history, lots of history here. Let's continue on the Apache Trail. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do the whole thing. The road is closed nine miles ahead because of road damage.
President Theodore Roosevelt said, The Apache Trail combines the grandeur of the Alps, the glory of the Rockies, the magnificence of the Grand Canyon, and then adds an indefinable something that none others have. To me, it is the most awe-inspiring and sublimely beautiful. Roosevelt himself rode on this very road in 1911 to dedicate the dam, which was later in 1959 named after him. And building the dam was the whole purpose of this road. The name of the trail comes from the Apache laborers who constructed it using their superior dry masonry and grading skills. It would have been great to do the whole thing, but this is as far as we can go. The Fish Creek Overlook. This is the end of the road. It is that kind of unique, barren, desert beauty out here. I really wish we could have gone all the way to the dam. The views for the rest of the road are supposed to be quite spectacular. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like they are in any rush to fix the road. Wildlife. I see one. There's three more in the area. <laughs> They're just kind of keep scoping around. They're kind of wandering around. It is one of those cases of wildlife hiding in plain sight. Very hard to see, very hard to spot. Unless someone with expert eyes points it out to you. That was a fun, easy trail here at the, at the end of the Apache. Well, the Apache Trail continues, but this is the, the point where it is currently closed. So, uh, yeah, beautiful views of the Superstition Mountains here. I think that it is the, the, still the Superstition Mountains. And the, the Apache Trail will, would continue that way if it, would, if it were open. So, all right, let's... Um, Let's head back because we're running out of sunlight here real quick. What can I say? It is a treacherous, narrow dirt road. Even the paved portion can be sketchy at times. I wonder if you're allowed to boondock out here. I see someone here on the right. I mean, it is Tonto National Forest, so it is probably okay.
day is coming to an end. And it's been a pretty good day. Tomorrow we're going back to Phoenix, Tempe to be exact, saying goodbye to the Superstition Mountains. And I'm not gonna do too much when it comes to sightseeing for the next few days. That's until Ilya arrives and then we're going to Sedona. It is so beautiful at this time of the day. Isn't this like one of the greatest campgrounds ever? Good morning, let's make it a breakfast of champions, bacon, eggs, mushrooms on a tortilla, and then off we go. Since I couldn't stay at that 55 plus RV park in Mesa, I decided to mooch dog with longtime viewers and friends Max and Sandy. He's actually from my neck of the woods in South Florida and she's from Arizona. And tonight we're going to eat Mexican food. Southwestern Cafe? Oh, Los Molinos. Yes. Los dos Molinos. Not one but two. Two Molinos. Two. Oh, two. Well, this place comes very highly recommended. Well, this is gonna be dinner with the, with the McLears in, 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 in Phoenix, Arizona at Los Dos Molinos. South Mountain Park. Chips and salsa, of course, homemade, and the extremely hot adobado ribs. Let's dig in. Very good food, and a nice ambience. One of the hottest meals I've ever had for sure. Mm. That uh, uh, pork uh, ribs adobada, adobada ribs, very good. <laughs> well, came to came to Fry's, which is like a, like a supermarket chain here in this area. I, I, I believe they're owned by they're probably owned by Kroger because uh, there's a lot of Kroger products in there. Also, great time spending some time uh, with the McLears with uh, with Max and Sandy. And we went to have that delicious Mexican food. And now we're gonna go to an RV park because sometimes, Turn sometimes you need full hookups. And this RV park is pretty close to, to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. But a great, na great name for an airport here in Phoenix. Uh, because Elisa is arriving on Saturday morning. Today is Wednesday or Tuesday? Today is Tuesday or Wednesday? Guys, no. I don't even know what day it is. It is Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, February 10th. Of course, you're probably gonna watch this in June. <laughs> at, the, at the rate I am going. Prophetic words, huh? And this is where I got a flat tire on the trailer. Pretty stressful moment. 
but I was able to limp a couple of blocks all the way to the RV park. Covered wagon here. Nothing fancy, but totally adequate, very reasonably priced for a city RV park, nice accommodating folks, and centrally located. Clean laundry facility, what else do you need? Going to Sedona, leaving the land of this uh, of the, the Sonoran Desert, the Saguaro Cacti, to the high desert. Yes, we won't be seeing too many more of these as we start gaining elevation. By the way, we are departing from the Phoenix area, going north on Interstate 17. a gorgeous drive that I took once before back in 2018 when I visited Sedona for the first time. This time however Ili is with me so it's going to be a lot more fun. This mountainous area is where old Kia, my former tow vehicle, struggled the most. It was really underpowered to tackle some of these mountains. All of a sudden, it is getting cloudy and there is rain in the forecast, but we'll make the best of it. Now descending onto Verde Valley. What a spectacular view! And even though it is sunny here, it is dark and cloudy north of us, so you can't really make out all the red rock formations. That's a little bit of a bummer. We'll be back to this area in a couple of days after Sedona. There's so much to see and do around here. Plenty of wineries and ruins from the Senagua people. We're really looking forward to this part of the trip. Here's where we're going to take State Route 179 north towards Sedona, entering Coconino National Forest and Red Rock Scenic Byway. And we can already see some of the Red Rock formations in the distance. This is the village of Oak Creek, which means we're almost there. And there's a huge traffic jam going into Sedona, which is expected at a super popular destination like this, especially on Valentine's Day weekend. It is going to be worth the crowds, let me tell you. I mean, take a look at that mountain. That is breathtaking. Yeah, traffic and gloomy weather. But isn't this like the cutest of towns? We're staying at Rancho Sedona RV Park, which is right in the middle of town. In fact, if it wasn't for Oak Creek in the middle of the way, we would just be a couple hundred feet from the main drag. It is nice, but one of those places with a whole booklet of rules and regulations. Let's go into town. And let me tell you, before we go, we have to visit this area right here. You know, the one we're driving through right now. It's called Talakipaki Arts and Shopping Village. 
There's a bunch of cool shops and restaurants, wineries and the brewery. Wait for it, wait for it. Boom! Lightning bolt! This is the main drag here on State Route 89A. And parking? Parking might be a challenge, but I have faith. Rain is imminent too. Oh, what did I do? I kept going and left town. I wanted to take this road, it is an incredibly scenic drive, but not right now. In fact, we're gonna run into some rain really soon here, so let's turn around as soon as possible. And we got caught in the rain. And we're back in Sedona, and we've found parking. It is raining in Sedona, but we don't care. We're gonna, we're gonna enjoy this town, and you can't really see the view, but it's, it's very nice, trust me. Yeah, maybe this was not a good idea, but we're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> it's kind of cold, yeah, and it's, uh, this rain doesn't help, but you know what? Did I lock the car? Let's try and get under a roof. Yeah, this is... Uh, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Winery, here we go. Doesn't look very full, but apparently dirt to capacity. Well, apparently they are at full capacity. So, um, yeah, maximum capacity is 16. All right, we'll figure something out, go somewhere else. Let's try the open range, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be impossible to. Yeah, this is hopeless. We're going to go someplace else. There's uh, this shopping area next to the Hyatt. We might have better luck there. At least there is parking. There's a place here called Art of Wine we might want to check out. But first, let's see the view. we are. It looks nice. And they have flights. Uh, there's a little bit of a long wait, but eventually we got to our table and our flights. And something to nibble on as well. Yeah, I know it is dark, but that was a great place. Very much fun. We had some great wines from Arizona. Hello everybody, good morning from Sedona. It is Valentine's Day and today we... Uh, last night was a lot of fun, a lot of rainy fun. Billy can attest to that. And, uh, and now, and now, 
We're gonna see if we can see some snow because we're from, from Florida. We never get to see snow. So we got a little bit of snow here on the tops of these rocks. Yep, while it was raining down here, it was snowing up there. This is Arizona 89A, one of the most striking drives you can take in the area. Vehicles over 50 feet, not allowed, although I wouldn't hesitate taking a short trailer, even though it is not recommended, and anything longer than Minitini might be a problem in the hairpin switchbacks coming up ahead. Here to the left, Slide Rock State Park. One of these days, one of these days, it seems more like a summertime destination, to be honest. We're quickly gaining elevation and quickly starting to see more and more snow. Oh no, my lens! What's going on? It is getting cloudy. Now when we're hitting the best parts. Luckily, I still have the inside camera. Not as sharp, but at least it is clear. By the way, this is kind of the beginning of the switchbacks, the dangerous part, if you will. But really, it's not that bad. We even have guardrails. That is Oak Creek Canyon, and there's a vista point at the top but with all this snow, yeah, it is closed. In 2018, I boondocked in this very forest. I wouldn't have been able to do that with all this snow. This right here is the entrance to the area where I camped, and it is completely covered in snow, and the road is closed. Ugh, my lens is getting cloudy again. Maybe it is all the salt on the road? Not a very well-plowed road here as we arrive in Flagstaff, the San Francisco peaks almost entirely behind the clouds. It is not a bad-looking city, and of course, one of the most famous towns on historic Route 66. There's historic hotel Monte Vista. Let's go up to Lowell Observatory to get that commanding view of the city. Fun fact, while the observatory itself is closed at the time of our visit, this is where the former planet Pluto was discovered. Well, that's a pretty nice view of the city. While we probably should have stayed in Sedona and enjoy what the town has to offer, everything was so crowded for Valentine's Day. Besides, the snow beckons our tropical hearts, so we're going to continue towards Williams, the gateway to the Grand Canyon and uh, another possible future location for Pelican West. It must have snowed a lot around here. Check it out! Historic Brewing! What can I say? They had me at brewing. <laughs> Let's park! Yes, it is another historic Route 66 town. Well, we decided to stop here at Williams, on a whim, really. and. We may or may not go to the Grand Canyon. We shall see. Because it is still an extra hour or over an hour away. But I saw a brewery and you know me and breweries. Oops, it's slippery here. Let me go through the not non-snowy part of the street. Oh, look at this old this old uh, gas pumps.
I always wanted to do that in fresh snow like that. There is the visitor center across the street. Let's go inside the brewery. We are both hungry and thirsty. Mm. Yeah, this is cool. We're drinking an opposable idea. We've got burgers. Let's dig in. Mm, look at that. It is like a shooting range, perhaps. It's a cool place. There's a Route 66 zipline with a 1957 Chevy, no less. Well, yeah, here we are, Williams, Arizona. Let's continue. It's bitterly cold still. So this is where the Grand Canyon Railroad is. It's pretty cool. We should take it one day. We've decided to save the Grand Canyon for tomorrow. So let's go back and enjoy Sedona a little bit this afternoon. We're back on the 89A. What a drive, right? We're gonna go see one of the most iconic landmarks here in Sedona, the Chapel of the Holy Cross. It is certainly unique in design. And from certain angles, it looks like it is wedged on the rock. It is really busy, but I'm confident we will find parking. Well, here we are, walking up to the church, the Holy Cross. This is supposed to be one of the energy vortices here. Not only that, but from this vantage point, you get to see some of the best views of the rock formations, like the courthouse and the bell rock. Let's go inside the chapel. This place was amazing. Now let's continue exploring. We're going to end our day here by going on a little hike with the little light we have left. Those pink jeeps seem like a lot of fun. One of these days, we're gonna go on an off-roading excursion, but for now, we're just gonna park at the Boynton Canyon Trailhead. There's supposed to be another energy vortex around here.
All right, this is the Boynton Canyon. And you are here. 0.2 and 0.2 to the Boynton Vista Trail. But we're just gonna do a little bit of this trail because it is getting dark. And there is supposed to be an energy vortex here at this Vista Point. Boynton Canyon, Dead Man's Pass, Mescal. Check it out, wildlife. What is this, a staring contest? Hey, wait, don't go away. Wouldn't it be great to have time and hike all the way up there? This is uh, the Red Rock Secret Mountain Wilderness. Even if we don't make it to the top, the views from the trail are pretty spectacular. Well, unfortunately, time's up. I wanted to go all the way to the top, but it's not worth risking having to do this part of the trail in the dark on the way back. So um, we might come back tomorrow. I mean, this is beautiful, beautiful up here and uh, back there. That's uh, the, the Enchanted Resort. Magnificent, magnificent views. It's really too bad that the sun's coming down so quickly. And sunset is upon us. Sunset is in about 20 minutes. And I don't want to be caught up, you know, in the middle of the jungle. It's not a jungle, but you know what I mean. Look at this view from the parking lot. And let me tell you, in hindsight, had we not gone all the way to Williams, we would have had the time to finish this hike. And tomorrow we're going back to the Grand Canyon anyway. But you know what? Life's unscripted and we have no regrets. We had a great time today, actually. We're just going to pull over and enjoy the sunset. All right, good morning. We've waken up pretty much at the crack of dawn. It is 30 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, kind of freezing. But um, what have we awakened at this ungodly hour, you might ask? Well, we're going to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> hey, South Rim. So um, it's about a little over two hour drive, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Enjoy the ride. Yes, the Grand Canyon. How exciting. I have often mentioned it as my number one natural wonder in the United States. We're taking a different route today. We're driving south towards the junction with I-17 in order to avoid the hairpin turns of 89A. It is a much longer route distance-wise, but it takes about the same time. Wow, 
Look at that. San Francisco peaks in their full splendor. They are magnificent mountains, aren't they? Volcanic in origin. The highest, Humphrey Peak at 12,633 feet or 3,851 meters. It is the tallest mountain in Arizona. Look at those clouds. We must be getting close to Area 51. And we can already see the Grand Canyon way out there in the distance. There's also Red Butte, another sign we must be getting close. That's the old Flintstones RV Park. We'll be back. This is rather unusual. There are not too many people waiting to get into the park. First stop, as usual, is going to be Mother Point by the Visitor Center. It is a short five-minute walk from the Visitor Center and it offers, in my opinion, some of the most expansive views of the Grand Canyon. Actually, it is the place I would recommend if you're visiting for the first time. While nothing can quite replicate that first experience, it really never gets old as the vastness slowly reveals itself before your very eyes. Well, here we are. We've made it to the Grand Canyon, South Rim. The better rim, in my opinion. The better views, but it is quite a sight to see. Let's get closer to the, to the overlook now. We can see Bright Angel Canyon here on the left. And one of these days, I want to hike the Rim to Rim Trail. The one that goes all the way to the other side. But for now, I'm just gonna climb onto this rock here. Somewhere out there on that side is the North Rim Lodge, only open in the warmer months. And way down there, we get a glimpse at the mighty Colorado River. Well, this is probably the best view of Mother Point here from the top of the rock, because you can see the whole panoramic, the whole Mother Point from up here, from, from, from this higher vantage point, and it's, uh, it's definitely a sight to see. This is probably the best view of the, of the Grand Canyon right from up here. Let's go see some of the other viewpoints, and we've never actually been on this side, on this road going west, hugging the south rim. And as you can see, all of a sudden it is overcast. Let's check out the view from Mojave Point here. Much better view of the Colorado River. It 
it would be fascinating to explore every crevice, every nook and cranny of this gaping crease in the middle of the high desert. Let's go all the way to the end, to Hermit's Rest. By the way, all these smaller vista points are great too. And uh, here we are. Hermit's Rest here has been around since 1914. Well, let's go all the way to the end, to where the Hermit used to rest. Well, the hermit was the hiker. And the hiker was a hermit. And I obviously have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, this is the hermit's rest. And, um, and apparently when you finish the long hike here, they will take care of you and give you vodka and stuff. I don't know. Let's enter the hermit's rest here. Under normal circumstances, we could have sit here by the fire, but... It's still early 2021. Well, this is it, Hermit's Rest. The end of the road here as we're driving west on the South Rim. And uh, now we're gonna see what, where the end of the road is, where it leads. By the way, they have a pretty cool shop here. They have like snacks and coffee and you saw that. Yeah, I thought we were gonna end it earlier back there, but we decided to come all the way to, to the Hermit's Rest here, which is like the end of the road. And, um, and now I think it is time to go back to Sedona. It is a little over two hours uh, drive, so and it's bitterly cold, bitterly cold. You have no idea. I mean, if you are from Minnesota, it's, this is probably like a nice balmy fall day for you guys. It is like 33 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's no wind, but there's no sun either. So. Beautiful, beautiful Grand Canyon. We're gonna start heading back, stopping at some of the smaller vista points to admire the views of the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. here real quick because from this vantage point you get a view of the Grand Canyon village over there beautiful view and look at that the Sun's coming out there's El Tovar Hotel very famous the Kachina the Thunderbird and the Bright Angel Lodge we stayed at one of those cabins back in 2013. Of course, no images can ever replicate the experience of standing here before this natural wonder. And with that, we're saying goodbye to the Grand Canyon. For now, we'll be back. This used to be a Flintstones-themed campground, nowadays called Raptor Park, but they decided to keep Bedrock City open, it being such a landmark. We're not gonna go in today, but it's nice to see that it's still here and that it is open.
perfect timing, the bells are tolling, and uh, I forgot the name of the place already. We are here at, <laughs> hold on. It's called the Tlaquipaque Arts and Shopping Village here in Sedona, and it's beautiful, beautiful place, and uh, very cute. We're gonna see that they have a wine place and they have several restaurants and arts galleries, so. And it looks like someone planted a tree in the middle of the building, or maybe they built the building around the tree. Oak Creek Brewery and Grill. You know that brewery is calling our names, but first we want to sample some local wines at this place called Vino Zona. They have one here and one in Jerome, and you know we're going to Jerome in a couple of days. This place is almost like a maze. And it does feel like we're going in circles looking for that wine place, but we don't really mind the walking all that much. There's great ambience here. We are Vino Zona, which I'm sorry to say was a little disappointing, which makes me kind of sad because I had very high expectations. I mean, the wines were okay, but the experience, I mean, they didn't even have a wine menu available for us to see and there was no one else there. Still, not bad, but it didn't live up to my expectations. This place definitely very picturesque, very uh, interesting. Let's just walk through here. There was a brewery somewhere around here. We just have to find it now. Now we are getting hungry, so let's look for that brewery. Here we are, Oak Creek Brewery and Grill. Oh yeah, we got a table with a view. Very nice view. He says it's the best table in the house. Mmm, corn chowder. And Illy got a flight. And we got two full racks of baby back ribs. Our only meal of the day. Definitely a good choice, Oak Creek Brewery. Oh, that, those, those ribs were amazing. We probably ate too much, but it is what it is. It's our one meal of the day. And their IPAs are really good, actually. Now let's go back to the RV. And we might call it a night, I mean, <laughs> after all that uh, food. But great discovery, this, this, the village, I forget the name now. I thought it was only like art galleries and crafts and stuff like that, but they have restaurants and the brewery and, and that wine bar, it's very cool. Going south towards Camp Verde. Here we are, descending onto Verde Valley, Arizona, the general area we're going to be exploring for the next couple of days. And amazingly enough, it's not cold anymore. The Colorado is in bad need of a, of a car wash, all that salt from the snow and all that stuff. Here we are, this is Distant Drums RV Resort. There's a casino right next door. And uh, very resort-like, you know, concrete pads, heated pool, very nice, everybody very nice. Except that we probably got like the worst site in the whole RV park. We don't, even, we don't have a picnic table to begin with. And our picnic area is like right here in the front, which 
So what we're gonna do, this is what we did actually. You're gonna make it work, right? We're gonna hang out back here. Sun's gonna set over there, so it's gonna be a nice like sundowner area. We have my, my new cactus collection. The one from Max McLear, the one from a Mini Greeny from Neon Pony. And uh, overall, very nice RV resort is just the fact that I think they try to maximize space a little too much. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, site 66 here, do not recommend it, but some of the other sites are very nice. All right, let's explore the area. If you recall, we were in this area back in 2018, on the first trip to the west with old Kia in which I did visit Montezuma Castle on my way to Sedona. Today we're going back, but besides the castle, we're also doing the well. Here we are, Montezuma Castle National Monument. And this is part of the National Park Service, so the America the Beautiful Annual Pass will get you in for free. Well, here we are once again, Montezuma Castle. There used to be a Native American gentleman here playing the flute, but I guess not in early 2020. I am always fascinated by cliff dwellings, thinking of the difficulty involved in their construction. This castle, part of a whole neighborhood inhabited by the Sinagua people between 1100 and 1400 AD. Here's what seems like a room with a fire pit. And uh, let's walk over to this side. As we look up, it must have been like a high-rise apartment building. Here they explain it better. It's a 900-year-old condo. This is Beaver Creek, the main water source. Well, that was a very pleasant short visit to Montezuma Castle. So now let's go down to Montezuma Well. Hmm, pit house ruin. Let's check it out. So that's what it would have looked like. And that's what remains. Let's continue. As we get closer, we realize that Montezuma well... Well, it's not a well at all. In fact, it is a limestone sinkhole, closely related to the cenotes found in Florida and Yucatan, an ancient cave that collapsed. And this one has the peculiarity of having a very large concentration of carbon dioxide, CO2, dissolved in the water, which prevents it from sustaining any kind of fish. Pretty cool. There are also ancient cliff dwellings all around the lake. Oh, we're gonna throw a bunch of fish in there and the next day they were belly up because of the CO2 and the arsenic. Oh. Freshwater leeches. Swimming. They're not the blood sucking. Oh, okay. Now, you guys see this? I don't, I think you guys just came up. I sh shared the story earlier. See that big chunk right here? Yeah. I said, oh, we're going to do a dig right here and start looking for artifacts and stuff. So they started a dig. There was a cowboy way out on the range and he saw smoke. So he's galloping over here, 
that mm. chunk came out of the side and landed on the archaeological site. Ooh. Luckily, they Ouch. weren't digging that day, but the message was, you're, you're, done, here. you're done here. <laughs> and there wasn't an earthquake, it wasn't anything, but you could see how oh, it just yeah. came right out of the side. Wow. So we'll never know what's buried there now. <laughs> <laughs> At least they were decent enough to uh, wait until nobody was down there. They could yeah, have been no really kidding. mean, I guess. Timing is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this short trail that goes all the way to the bottom. Amazing how they built those all around the lake, a sinkhole I should say. And there's that big chunk of rock that fell on top of the archaeological site. The ranger told us the whole story, luckily no one was hurt. Hmm, there's a boat. Another dwelling here at the bottom. And some contemporary petroglyphs. This is the point where the water goes out, always keeping the same level inside the well. This was very cool, almost cooler than Montezuma Castle itself. We're going to do another short trail that kind of goes around the well at first and then it goes towards the parking lot. Here we got some more ruins. Let's continue. Verde Valley happens to be a famous wine region and that's what we're gonna do next. We're going to do some wine tasting because that's what you do, right? There's a Thousand Trails RV park very close to the winery called Verde Valley RV Resort and we called, but there was no vacancy. The winery is through here. Here we are, Alcantara Vineyards and Winery. It is a beautiful property. These are nice. Cypress trees. Let's do a wine tasting first. We decided to get a glass each and have some cold cuts al fresco. Here we are, back at Distant Drums RV Resort. We're gonna take a break and tomorrow we'll keep on exploring. Here's our site, surrounded by other rigs with no privacy whatsoever. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to start lying about my size. Good morning, 
from really this is the new york of rv parks one neighbor neighbor's dog poop right there another neighbor another neighbor another neighbor another neighbor luckily we're only here to sleep so uh, it's, it's not like it's, it's not the kind of rv park where i'm gonna hang out at this minuscule campsite here so um let's go explore the area shall we About once a week, this is what we do. And this is how we do it. Also, time for a much needed car wash. There it is. That's where we're going, to the good National Monument. Give me brochures if you'd like. You can look around inside. The trail's out the door and up the hill to the left. Thank you. You're welcome. Tuzigot here is the largest and best preserved of the many Sinagua Pueblo ruins here in the Verde Valley. 110 rooms built here on top of this hill. Very impressive. In the past, you were able to go all the way to the top, but there's been some damage, so not anymore. Yeah, we were just talking to the, to the ranger there, by the way, very, very helpful rangers. They like super eager to, to answer any questions. And, uh, and most of it, apparently, it's uh, reconstructed. And what happened, it had a, there was a fire and it imploded onto itself. So all they found was like this pile of rocks and the foundation. So guided by the foundations and what they think, I guess, it would have looked like, that's how they rebuilt this whole thing. But, um, I mean, it could have looked like a pyramid for all we know, right? But I'm sure that they have some science that went into figuring out how to rebuild it in the 1930s, I believe it was. And uh, as the story goes, it's uh, too good that there was one Apache uh, worker that helped the reconstruction. And too good means crooked river in Apache. And since we are right next to the Verde River, which is it's a meander of the river, that's where the name comes from. We're going to Jerome, which is one of those places which has been recommended by everybody, so expectations are high. There's a big J on top of that mountain, so we must be getting close. it, Jerome, located on Cleopatra Hill. It is a historic copper mining town, a living ghost town if you will. Founded in 1876, it was at one time the fourth largest city in Arizona, peaking at around 10 to 15,000 in the 1920s. Today just over 400 remain and the mining business has given way to tourism, the arts, and wineries. Yeah, more wineries. Before we park, 
Let's drive clear across town on all these switchbacks. We're going to see a vista point on the other side and then we'll come back, we'll park and explore the town. It is certainly unique, and I love mountainous towns like this one. That's Haunted Hamburger here to the left. That's where we're going to have lunch later. And there's Jerome Grand Hotel, perched at the top. We have to stop by before we go. Can you imagine living in one of these houses? The views must be spectacular. Here's the vista point. It's a nice view, but I think it is much better from the town, so let's go back and find parking. This is what I'm talking about. Take a look at that view. We can even see the San Francisco peaks, which are Arizona's tallest mountains. Oh, check it out, to have a bordello. Former bordello, perhaps. Let's take a walk around. Definitely a uniquely quirky town. And those views, man, those views. Somehow, this reminds me of Rhyolite. Different ghost town. There's the J Mountain, and there's the original Jerome Winery, established 2001. Seems like a very recent date to be called the original, but we'll give it a try when it opens in a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's check out this old theater and this old cool-looking projector. You know, this is like a 70 millimeter projector. Obviously, I don't really know what I'm talking about. It's the oldest movie theater in Arizona. It's pretty cool. Let's try the wines. Here we are. You gotta do the wine tasting, right? It is a pretty cool wine bar, artsy. I'm about to try mead for the first time, so wish me luck. Actually, I like it. Well, I really enjoyed the, that mead, and that was a good that was a good wine tasting. Roaming the streets of Jerome, looking for something to eat, actually. Well, they had me at Saloon, but it is the oldest family-owned saloon in Arizona, so we're gonna have to come back here later. Hey, look at that. All the, all the people, open. but... It's back to 1896. We've heard great things about the haunted hamburger, so that's where we're going. And, yeah, that's quite a view from up here. Well, the haunted burger here comes... Uh, highly recommended. So, let's do it. Luckily, we got a table with a view. Ellis burger. My burger. Bon appetit. And once again, the view. We can even see the San Francisco peaks, as I said before. Isn't that something? Well, that was a good burger. A very good IPA. That, that IPA. Now we're gonna walk around town a little bit, see what else is there to see here. I mean, I mean, the burger was good, but the best things are the views. You can see all the way to the San Francisco peaks, all the way like, I'll show you now in a few minutes.
That's where we're going next, Jerome Grand Hotel, formerly a hospital and allegedly haunted. Hence the name of the restaurant called Asylum. And the views, again, are pretty good too. Let's see if we can go in. That is supposed to be the first self-service elevator in Arizona. Let's see what's in the garage. This is a 1928 Rolls Royce. 1928 Rolls. Beautiful. Very cool. I really like old automobiles. Yeah, there's too much reflection. Let's continue. Let's go into the asylum. About the bar. We're gonna have a drink at the old asylum here. Check it out a disco ball. Let me tell you, Jerome, it seems like a fun town. We could easily spend a couple of days here and not get bored, so one of these days. Some other places are like been there, done that. This one is one of those towns that you say, hmm, I could come back here. It seems touristy, but in a good way, if you know what I mean. Now, let's go see an actual mineshaft. Fun to drive. Fun to drive in Jerome. This is it, Audrey Headframe Park. It was the largest facility of its kind still standing in Arizona, built in 1918. And it is not what you see above ground, but what's underground that's impressive. The shaft goes down to a staggering 1900 feet. In comparison, that's way taller than the Empire State Building. We're going to make one final stop at the Gold King Mine and Ghost Town. And let me tell you, this dirt road looks a lot sketchier than I was expecting. I mean, no guardrails, and it is pretty narrow in certain areas. I swear it looked like a normal street in Google Maps. Just like that, we're back in the middle of town. And that's it! Somehow not exactly what I was expecting. Somehow I was expecting something like Tombstone, perhaps, or something like that. check it out real quick but I don't know yeah I don't know if it was earlier we would have done it but we are tired and I think we've had enough fun for one day kind of cute aren't they yeah I think we're gonna save this one for another day let's head back what a view from here. Let's stop for a second. There's the mine shaft. And that seems to be a hotel.
Now that was a fun day. Tomorrow we're going somewhere else. Actually, we're going back to the Sholo area. and eventually back to Sholo Lake and uh, yeah happy to be on the road again Arizona's diversity of climate and landscape never ceases to amaze me. We're back in Sholo and uh, there seems to be a lot more snow now, compared to the last time I was here about two weeks ago. Sholo Lake Campground seems to be completely covered in snow and I don't want to risk driving in there without four-wheel drive, so plan B. We're going to Pine Top. And at this point, it is going to be whatever campground answers the phone or returns my call earlier. You'll be surprised how many places you have to call and leave a message, and they never call you back. And the winner is the Honda Casino RV Park. Also covered in snow, but we'll figure it out. Super nice folks, they gave me a site that wasn't too snowed in, and I'm terrified about backing in in the snow, but... I think this is gonna work out. Well, this is certainly a first for us. Yeah, that's that white stuff you see on the ground. It is snow. We're staking at the at the Honda Casino RV Park here in Pine Top, Arizona, near Sholo. We, 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 we were gonna stay at the Sholo campground, but it was all snowed in, and I didn't feel comfortable driving in the snow. And then. I backed it in, in the snow here, and uh, for the most part, it, it went, uh, uh, you know, with no problem. It was uh, a trouble-free uh, backing in, of course, you know, there's, it's pretty hard packed sand here on the, on the driveway, so, but I had never done that. I had never actually driven in the sand, um, in the sand, in the snow. And I was supposed to even come farther back this way, but I don't feel, you know, the, the, the least that I drive on this, uh, on this uh, white stuff. Ooh, look at that. Look at how deep. The, the least that I have to drive on this white stuff, the better. We're gonna unhitch now and, uh, and go explore. And, uh, and yeah, we're gonna spend the night here. I forgot how much it was, it was 40 something for full hookups, but we're only gonna use the electric. Let's face it. <laughs> I don't even know where the sewer is. <laughs> we're going to drive a couple of miles back west to Pine Top Brewing Company for dinner. I was here a few days ago and I liked it. Oh, 
خبر فیست Well, that was really good. Some people say scrumptious. Is that a word? But yeah, we're gonna go back to the RV park and then we're gonna loop around the area a little bit. We ended up not going anywhere else. Enough snow for one day. Another frigid day comes to an end. Good morning. Yeah, we're, we're frozen pretty solid here. It is, um, well, it is definitely sub-freezing temperature. Let me show you here what my app says. Okay, according to the app, my radar, it says 15, and it feels like seven. And uh, for the rest of the world, it is negative 10 degrees Celsius and it feels like negative 14. So yeah, this in conclusion, this is the coldest we've ever been with, with any RV. Yeah, the sun is rising here, and uh, we're gonna hit the road in about an hour, in about an hour, because we have a long drive today. Uh, we're gonna go all the way to Wilcox, but we're thinking of taking a scenic route. It is a winter wonderland here, in the aptly named White Mountains. Of Arizona. Yeah, I came up with this brilliant idea of taking US 191, also known as the Coronado Trail. It will take longer, but it is supposed to be super scenic. What a place, huh? Over 9,000 feet above sea level. Some of these landscapes remind me of tundra climate. Here's the Casa Malpais archaeological site, but apparently you have to take a tour, so we'll come some other time. It is an ancestral Pueblo site, so I really wanted to see it, but you can't just show up, I guess. It doesn't even appear on Google Earth, so I don't even know where it is exactly. In any case, here's Nelson Reservoir, another great point of interest along this route. Beautiful lake, and it is half frozen. Here, let's stop and take a break for a few minutes. Oh, here we go. This is the half-frozen Nelson Reservoir. The journey continues, going south on the Coronado Trail Scenic Byway. Yeah, no overnight camps or parking here, next to the frozen lake. I keep seeing all these US-191 warnings as we approach Alpine. I should have known better, right? 191, here we come! 
It says not snow plowed at nights, weekends, or during storms. I mean, it's been several days since the last snowfall, so what could possibly go wrong? Well, it doesn't look like the snow plow did a very good job around here now, did it? Let's hope it doesn't get any worse. Just a little nerve-wracking to see all this ice on the road. I mean, I'm gonna continue. It's not like I can just make a U-turn. I don't know anything about snow, but this looks pretty bad to me. Okay, I see someone riding a snowmobile. This should be my cue, right? So we're gonna turn around, I think this might work. As much as I would love to keep going, I don't think it's worth the risk. We're back in Alpine, with our tail between our legs, defeated by the snowy mountain. Well, yeah, that uh, was an epic fail. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes uh, you don't realize that, you know, according to the Arizona Department of, of Transportation, the road is plowed and, uh, you know, I guess it's, it's not, not a non-essential road, it's a scenic byway. And uh, yeah, decided to turn around and now we're gonna be, you know, plans are meant to be changed. Now we're gonna go briefly into New Mexico and then back into Arizona and hopefully we'll make it to Wilcox uh, while it is still daylight. So let me show you, this was the original route. Now this is the new route. It might still be a treacherous mountain drive, but at least the road seems to be plowed. Scenic overlook. All right, let's check it out. Take a break, maybe lunch. I just had a quick lunch. Didn't show you just uh, just two salads from from Safeway. But we, we do need another car wash. And uh, look at look at this uh, this rest area here. It's a, it's technically a scenic vista point. Look at the view. This is amazing with all these uh, mountains um, on that side. Which I have no idea exactly where we are. I know we're in New Mexico. This wasn't part of the plan, as you know. This was a uh, detour and we're gonna of course arrive behind schedule but already i already changed the time of the lives of the live stream to a later time so yeah this is amazing and it's not as cold anymore you know in the in the desert sun
but a spectacular drive this is. It might be even better than the Coronado Trail, but of course, we may never find out. Took a quick break here to switch uh, SD memory cards and look at this view. This is quite a sight. Right here in New Mexico. This was not part of the plan, by the way. <laughs> and we're back in Arizona, quickly descending from the mountain range. Just as if this day couldn't get any more interesting, we're running out of gas. We haven't seen a gas station for miles. I mean, I do have five gallons in the back at all times, just in case, but I'd rather not have to use it. A gas station! Finally. Well, it's been one of those days. We almost got stuck in the snow and we almost ran out of gas, but it's been a beautiful drive and now we've only got 45 minutes to go, so... Let's do it. Here we are, arriving in Wilcox. Tomorrow we'll continue exploring this area, Bisbee, Tombstone and Shirakawa National Monument. All right, the time has come to depart. Very nice KOA, um, and as uh, as it is usually the case with this uh, overnight stays we do. Did I take my? My pressure regulator, yes I did. Um, we didn't get to enjoy the, all the amenities, but they have, uh, they have a hot tub, they have beautiful views of the mountains around uh, um, Wilcox here. And they have room service. Mm. Aha. Like, uh, very nice. We're gonna put, uh, uh, you know, fill up our propane tank, which uh, ran out uh, last night. And, um, and on the road again. I-10 in this area and pretty much throughout Arizona is one of those stretches of interstate that is actually a pleasure to drive. Such beautiful barren country out here. This area with all these rocks is actually called Texas Canyon and there is a rest area. We are now approaching Benson, and from here we're going to take the detour south, almost all the way to the border. One of these days we'll explore Benson in more detail. We're going to be driving through Tombstone briefly here, but we're staying 23 miles farther south at Bisbee which is less than 10 miles from the Mexican border. Here we are, finally, at the legendary town of Bisbee, Arizona, and we were able to get the very last sight at the only RV park within walking distance to town, the Queen Mine RV Park. 
I drove through here back in 2018, but with the trailer in tow, it is impossible to park in the narrow streets of downtown. And I wanted to come back ever since. And now we have a site. Well, here we are, we just arrived. This is uh, called Queen Mine RV Park. And it's right here by the, by the mine. Let me show it to you. It's tight, you know, it's basic, but it's walking distance to town. And that's, that's main, the main feature here. Here's the office and there's no one there right now. It's just kind of honor system. You deposit a, your envelope with a check or cash, $35 a night. Nice common area here. Very beautiful, and let me show you. Let me show you the view. Look at that. The Queen Mine, right here. This was, at one point in the early 1900s, the most productive mine in the state of Arizona. After decreasing returns, it finally closed in 1985. Let's go into town, but first, let's check out some of the artifacts here from the Queen Mine. In order to do the underground tour, you do need a reservation, and we don't have one, so let's just see this and then go explore the historic town. We're just gonna roam around the streets here at first, admiring the old buildings. And check it out! That used to be the old jail. That seems to be a nice bar. Maybe we'll come back later. And this seems to be the main corner here, with the narrow gauge rail. And that, that is the museum. Look at all this mining equipment here. It is such a picturesque town. Pretty much any direction you look. This is the Bisbee Grand Hotel and looking back, the giant bee on the mountain. Hmm, those look like the Beatles from the album Help, made out of copper. The inn at Castle Rock, which must be, this must be Castle Rock, right? This is the Castle Rock Casita. It's an Airbnb. Very cute. Let's see what the plaque says. The Great Stair Climb. It is part of an annual stair climbing event. Such a cool town, so many places to eat and hang out, so much history too. The Art Deco building is the Cochise County Courthouse. That interesting looking copper statue from the 1930s is locally known as Iron Man. Well, we'll keep going up, the, up this hill. Uh, not very pedestrian friendly, but you get a unique uh, perspective of the town of Bisbee from up here. And the bee, the big bee. Very artistic town. I guess this is the less seen part of town as we are hiking on some of the upper back streets. Sometimes it is cool to get off the touristy beaten path and discover what the town really looks like. 
that looks just like a high school gym. Wow, that's a pretty cool look in high school right there. This must be some kind of old ruins from an old building, but it doesn't say. This is the old city park. I think uh, this is going to conclude our exploration of the back streets of Bisbee here. Let, let's just go to the touristy part now. Muffler art, perhaps? Hmm, dating back to 1916. Historic, for sure. Let's keep walking around. I know there's gotta be a brewery somewhere around here, right? And I really like that building. And lots of haunted buildings in this town, allegedly. And graffiti art. Lots of graffiti art. That's the bar we saw earlier. The Copper City Saloon. And uh, I wonder what this is through this doorway. Some haunted stuff, I'm sure. And the box van art car. Brewery at the Stock Exchange Saloon. Mm, I don't think we want to go in there. Very lively. I think we're going to end up at the old Bisbee Brewing Company. I go into produces. Well, we're we're sitting here eating. among all the. I go into my bar. All the fer fermentation tanks. So we don't have to have that. Really. I'm sorry, bro. It's pretty cool, actually. Don't leave. I serve people. I try and to serve people. I'm pretty good, pretty good beer too. That's the one we're drinking, so I guess I could just open it up and get more. Let's check out the saloon we saw earlier. <laughs> wow. Cool, but no. Let's go eat at Santiago's instead. We've heard great things. Yeah, you can't see me, but we ate some Mexican food. Imagine if a blue iced tea married a margarita. That's what you get here. It's delicious. Ooh. I don't, I'm not sure how to eat this, but. I'm sure it's gonna be good. <laughs> well, yeah, that was called a molcajate. And apparently it's that volcanic rock, you know, that that uh, that it came in. And uh, that was one of the tastiest Mexican foods I've ever had. At least in a long time. I think we're gonna go back to the RV park because, ooh, we're stuffed. And uh, I think tomorrow we'll continue the adventure. And we're back. Good morning and greetings from the Queen Mine in Bisbee, Arizona. From this vantage point, we can see the RV park and the town behind it. What a great view. Let's get a little closer. Here's looking back towards the mine. We can see Castle Rock on the left and the high school building. What a great way to get a lay of the land from up in the air. There's the Queen Mine and the RV Park.
Okay, one more view before we land. Beautiful, beautiful morning, beautiful drone flight uh, we just did there in, in Bisbee. And, uh, and now we're going to Tombstone. That's because, you know, it's 20 miles away, might as well do it, right? There were three things we missed in Tombstone the last time we were here. The Birdcage Theater, Boot Hill Cemetery, and the OK Corral. We're going to try and do at least two of those. Well, hello everybody, we made it to Tombstone. It's one of those places, super touristy town here in Arizona, but it's one of those places you have to come at least once, right? And, uh, well, Illy hadn't been here, so this is that bird cage theater that one of these days we're gonna visit. It's like, like, like a time capsule in there. Um, I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, within these walls, remains of a bygone era. Like, uh, I think they've, they've been found like bottles of whiskey on the bar, like there was a bar fight. And... Well, long story short, we decided to go into the bird cage. And as the story goes, the allegedly haunted theater operated continuously from 1881 until 1889, with a reputation as one of the wickedest spots between New Orleans and San Francisco. 26 people were killed during that period of time. And when it closed in 1889, it remained undisturbed until it was purchased in 1934, the new owners finding a virtual time capsule of a bygone time. It has been a tourist destination ever since, and nowadays it is like a museum with all kinds of artifacts from the era. Let's go up on the stage. It is a very cool place, definitely worth a visit. And they even have ghost tours. And here's an original tombstone hearse. Let's go down to the basement, where the longest poker game in history took place. It lasted 8 years, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Oh, here it is. Ooh, creepy. If these walls could talk. And here's the official plaque. I like this sign. Well, we ended up going in. It's uh, $14 per person for the self-guided tour. I think that was a good deal considering the, the amount of history that, that you have in there. Well, let's continue exploring this um, there's a couple of blocks here on this street here in Tombstone that is the, the historic area. And we have a stagecoach coming, so... Um... Yeah, let's get out of the way. It is kind of Disney-fied, with a stagecoach driver in costume and garb. But take away all the modern anachronisms, and it is like going back in time. And uh, we encountered our first saloon here. A little, a little early to be salooning too. Let's continue. Here we are, Big Nose Skate Saloon. Let's check it out. It's a really cool saloon. The piano man kind of reminds me of my friend Chuchi. And that's the OK Corral where they do the gunfight reenactment. 
I think we might skip it. And it is getting busier here on the streets of Tombstone. We're not gonna go into the historic courthouse either. We've been there before, and I made a really good video about it, so we're just going to wander around the streets a little bit, and then go to the Boot Hill Cemetery. Very cool town, Tombstone. And it is one of those places, so touristy, but in a way it is well executed. And um, towards street musician. And you know I love a town with street musicians. And stagecoach rides. And saloons. And we haven't even gone into any of the shops, but they have pretty cool stuff. And with that, we're going to say goodbye to Tombstone, Arizona. Let's go to the cemetery. Hmm, tight parking lot. And here we are. It is only $3 per person, so let's check it out. Hill Graveyard. This was Tombstone's first cemetery, established in 1879. Then, a new cemetery was established in 1884 and many locals moved their loved ones to the new cemetery because they didn't want them spending eternity next to thieves, murderers, rustlers, prostitutes and Chinamen. A lot of this has been recreated actually because for many years after the boom there was no one left to tend to the graves. Many famous and not so famous people were interred here between 1878 and 1884. By the way, this one is supposed to be haunted as well. At least their final resting place came with a nice view. Let's go back to Bisbee, but this time we're gonna keep going a few miles farther south, all the way to the Mexican border. There it is, the wall that separates the north from the south. Let's just make sure we make a right here because I forgot to bring my passport. And that's it, we're going back to Bisbee and we're gonna call it a night. I think we've had enough fun for one day. Tomorrow we begin the long journey back to Florida but on the way back to I-10, we're going to stop by another uniquely Arizona place. Park, location, location, location. Unless you get site one, site one, make sure you don't. I mean, I mean it's it's fine, location, location, but site one, the 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 sewer is like on the wrong side, so we didn't dump. We're gonna dump at the next place this afternoon. And uh, but other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a great location if you wanna visit Bisbee, even if you wanna visit visit uh, Tombstone.
That's the Border Patrol checkpoint, but there's no one there. I see something in the air, and we happen to be passing by Whitewater Draw, a major sandhill crane roost site. And every winter you can see over 20,000 sandhill cranes as they take off in the morning. And I guess we just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Before heading back to Florida, we're making a quick stop at Chiricahua National Monument. We've heard great things about it. Let me get my collectible map. It is a narrow, winding road, so we're gonna have to drop the trailer right here and continue with the truck. Uh, always a little sad to leave Minnetini behind, but sometimes you have to do it. What an amazing place this is. Look at all these hoodoos. And there are a bunch of trails here in the park, but we're just gonna go to Maasai Point, which is the highest, and do the nature trail. Yeah, commanding views, commanding views, I tell ya. Take a look at this place. We're gonna do the Maasai Nature Trail, which pretty much goes around this, this mountain top here at uh, the Chiricahua Mountains Wilderness. Look at all these green rock formations here. It's quite a sight to see. What a strange place this is. That one is going to fall one of these days. Some of them almost look like people. I think we're doing this trail backwards. I see most people going counterclockwise. We finally made it to the top, to the main vista point. Can we see anything through here? Mm, not with the camera. Well, yeah, that was an amazing view from this vista point here. And um, now we're gonna continue doing the trail backwards as we are doing it. There's another precariously balanced rock. What a view! We can see Cochise Peak all the way out there in the distance. That looks like some kind of extraterrestrial head. Uh, and that one too. Sugarloaf Mountain, apparently. I think that's where we're going next. But yeah, very cool trail and relatively easy. There's a couple of steep areas like stairs and stuff, but other than that, it's very easy. Cochi's head. Yeah, you can kind of see Cochi's head laying down, but it's like a Monet. Once you get closer, the illusion falls apart. Let's go up to Sugarloaf Mountain real quick.
Let me tell you, I wish we would have allocated more time to do some of the trails here, but we have really liked what we've seen, so we'll return. Unfortunately, our time here in the West is up. So over the next five days, we're going to make the almost cross-country drive all the way back to the Sunshine State. Which, really, the Sunshine State should probably be Arizona, but I digress. Driving to the I hope you have enjoyed our 2021 Arizona adventure. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.
Cause I'm free in my RV. <laughs>